This video, if you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve <laughs> as your warning. Anymore. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Gotta turn up the mic. So, yeah, hopefully I won't have to wear this thing too much longer. Feels a little better, you know, but I still have the same numbness in the fingers. Kind of sucks. <laughs> That's why you won't be seeing my face on the screen. And by the way, I have the stream um, OBS studio, so it doesn't have the audio if you guys send in super chats. It'll still show up in the chat, but it won't show up in the audio because I'm going to be playing this 50-something minute long sort of conversation from, uh, I'm going to be playing this 50-something uh, minute long conversation from Leila, or Leila Cavett's, um, the person she went to go visit down in Florida. Okay, so it's, he's kind of an interesting person because he seems somewhat believable even though he seems a little bit nuts you know <laughs> just listening to him and then if you go to his Facebook page his name is Shannon Ryan apparently he's the guy that uh, she met he seems to be some sort of um, I don't know what you call him like a spiritual healer type or whatever uh, so anyways let's just switch over to the middle screen here Do you guys remember hey thanks Michelle Nicholas uh, this is the case where uh, Lily Cavett let me get go to her uh, Google Earth here in a second and then in a minute here I'll probably get a phone call so I'll have to take that I think All right, this is the one where her child member was walking around on the street, Camden Cavett, and the day before she was seen at a Walmart. Hey, thanks, Tracy Seamer. Her car was found in this uh, Walmart right here. And I think the other day they actually had a the specific location in there. But anyways, it was in this parking lot right here. Okay, and... I think she's from Alabama, if I, don't, if I or yeah, Alabama. And she went down to Florida, and family members are like, "Wow, why'd you go to Florida? Why'd you go to Florida?" But I think if we listen to this guy's interview, it will. It sort of paints a whole different picture, even though who knows if we can believe what he's saying. Okay, so hold on, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, let me just go through this. And the FBI, they got involved recently. Um, August 6th article here on CNN. The FBI is now involved in the case of a missing Georgia woman whose toddler was found barefoot, wandering alone in a Florida city almost two weeks ago. The Bureau was providing assistance to local uh, enforcement uh, let's see, local law enforcement, I think they meant the right there. Layla Cavett, 21, of Dawsonville, was last seen July 25th in a Walmart parking lot in Hollywood, Florida, with a man, according to uh, Javeron Buckley, an attorney hired by Cavett's family. Cavett's two-year-old son, Camden, was found the next day walking without shoes and wearing a soiled diaper outside an apartment complex about two miles from his mother's last sighting. 
Luckily told CNN. Okay, and then two residents there called police and cared for the toddler in the meantime. Police recovered Cavett's white mid to late 90s Silverado 3500 pickup truck in Hollywood on July 28th. Buckley said it's, it's, uh, it said baby on board on a sign. Cavett was last seen driving the truck. The Miramar Police Department. So that's kind of an interesting story that this guy tells. So we'll watch the whole thing. Uh, when I was done, I just wasn't really sure what to make of it because he's a little unusual. But the way he, the stuff that he said, some of it rang true to me. Some of it was a little, you know, especially when he's talking about surveillance cameras and whatnot. So let's listen to that right now, okay? So here's the guy right now. His name is Shannon Ryan. His Facebook page, I put a link in the description so you can go watch it on your own because I'll probably stop it and comment on it okay so if you're one of the triggered people who when I stop an interview uh, to make a comment and complain about it you probably won't enjoy it okay because this is a live show and that's what I do okay I don't I'm, you know so I'll let it play most of the time but when I hear something that's weird I'll probably say something okay great greetings family it's a beautiful day outside, enjoying the day after Lion Gates 9, so I'm born, birth into existence. Today, I want to talk about Layla Cavett, or Cavett, who she is and what my connection is to her. You know, Layla's missing right now. And I just want to say this, why is it the only connection that you made between me and Layla Cavett is the one that I posted? You know, I just see some people show up on my post and says real ignorant ass shit. Real ignorant ass shit. Yeah. Some of the same individuals, some of the same individuals that I've been helping for the last five or six years. Why is it you have a missing girl or a missing woman and the last person that seen her, which is me, who talked to the police, you ain't heard nothing about me. The police ain't flashed my name across the newspaper. They haven't put me on TV. They haven't put out a warrant for my arrest. But some of you motherfuckers want to show up on my post and say some of the most ignorant things. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Because you end up making yourself look even more foolish toward the end. Hmm. We have a missing woman. And I gave the police everything that I know. Everything. But here it is. And this y'all first time hearing of this. Uh, or hearing of my connection to it. Why did I post that? Because I posted the pictures. I put the material up. Because I wanted to draw attention to the fact of what is actually going on. Hmm. You know, people have begun to say, he's guilty. I'm guilty. Why am I guilty? And let me remind you, I put the information up there. You ain't heard shit about me. I posted it. He's guilty. Why? He has a felonies. He did things in the past. Yeah, I did some burglary when I was younger. And, oh, I sold drugs when I was younger. And, oh, I went to prison, too. I went to prison too. See, that was the dirt that I grew up out of. That made me the God that I am today. So now, individuals love to try to hold you to a past frequency. You mean I can't change? I can't be transformed? I can't be renewed? Oh yeah, you can do all those things. Yeah, but then the minute something goes wrong, then you go back and say, this is who the fuck he is. Look at what he used to do. He's a criminal, so he had to have something to do with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Your vote of confidence. Because I'm a black man, right? <laughs> and I'm a criminal. And I was the last one to see the girl. So automatically, automatically, I got something. I mean, what he's saying right there is kind of true, right? That's kind of how it works. You know? So first of all, don't be a criminal beforehand. 
you know it's good it's easy not to be a criminal you just don't do things that are being you know, to be a criminal okay but what he's saying there is true right that 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 is kind of how it works oh my god everybody starts looking up to see if he's got a criminal history that kind of thing okay and you can see his demeanor is a little bit weird you know but there wasn't any time where I was like, oh, my God, you know. There's a couple times when he starts talking about the surveillance cameras and stuff like that. Like he was aware. I, I don't know. I, I might have to listen to that part again. But it's just. Oh, hold on. Let me play it and turn this down. Nothing to do with it. Thank you, America. <laughs> Prove my point. Never mind what I've been doing for the last six years of my life since I've been out of prison. Never mind the time, the energy, and the effort that I've dedicated to helping people, healing people. How many of y'all have I talked to personally, one-on-one, -on -one, cry with you? Huh. Yeah. He's a criminal. Lock him up. He did it. Yeah, but now, you can't hold me to a past frequency. I am who I am standing in front of you. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, I mean, obviously he knows he's a person of interest. Every time you're the last person known to have seen somebody, you're a person of interest, okay? But that's not what he's referring to. So pay attention. You know, what I'm saying is, you know, on, his, on Facebook, everybody's like, oh, my God, you have these criminals, and they use that to make it seem like he's more nefarious, okay? I mean, I, I understand that, but what he said there was true, okay? So don't try to be the holier-than-thou types, you know, and that kind of thing. Let's just listen to what he says, see what happens. And Layla Kevet or Kevet is missing. Well, let me tell you about my connection to Layla Kevet. I said it was about a year ago. It was almost a year ago. It might be a little bit over a year. I'm living in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, me and my apprentice, Tiffany Sanders, and her son. And we're staying in the three-bedroom house. I say it's like one, two o'clock in the morning. And there's a thunderstorm, tornado, something going on because the weather's real bad. And I'm getting ready to go to sleep. And I say, I got a knock at the door. About oh, and thank you, Mysterious Monkey. I missed yours when I walked away from the computer for a second. Twim. Boom, 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 boom. Don't nobody knock on my door. So now, Miss Sandals answers the door. She goes outside, and then she comes back. She said, there's some girls standing out on our porch and she, with a little baby, and they're wet, and they're dirty. And she's saying that her car broke down. I said, okay, babe, I'll go out there and talk to her. So now, I go outside, and I'm sitting up here, and I'm talking to this girl. And now, here's this girl with these itty bitty 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 shorts on, and this little bitty 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 shirt on, and she's covered in dirt and filth, and she's wet, and she's pushing this buggy. And in this buggy is a whole bunch of junk, and it's dirty, and it's filthy, and it's wet, and there's a little baby in the buggy. And here they are, they're walking down a country ass road in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, pushing a buggy in a thunderstorm, wet, dirty. And she tell me that her car broke down. Girl, you ain't just got out in the car looking like that. tell me she needs to use my phone she needs to call she's from i think jasper i need to go to jasper i'll take you there in the morning if i had to and i'm gonna let you make some phone call so i go in there and i talk to tiffany tiffany and we explain it or i explain it to her and then so we're gonna let her spend the night we'll just figure this out in the morning because it's, it's too late you know so boom i let her come in i give her a spot in my living room boom here you go you can you and your son y'all can go to sleep right here y'all need to take a bath bring some more clothes out whatever you need to do so now, when she get up in the morning, her story isn't that her car broke down. Now, she's saying, okay, I was living with this girl and... Yeah, I think it's very possible that he's high here because he says later, he, you know, he was looking for weed. You look at his face, he has red eyes and everything like that. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> there's people right now watching the show in the chat that are high. I guarantee it. So... Here we go. We were living in Tennessee and we came back down here. I think we went to, I think they went to Jasper. And as it was coming back through, Layla said she went in the store. Layla said she went in the store. And when she came back out, the girl had left her and all her baby stuff just out there in the parking lot. And she had been stranded in Muscle Show since. 
So I said, okay, what about your parents? Can we just take you to your parents? She said, no, I can't go there. And I was like, well, why? She, basically, what it broke down to, she was like, well, they're dysfunctional. The whole, and I don't want to take my son to that dysfunctional environment. And then when it really came down to it, I'm like, Layla, what's really the problem? Because usually a person can go home. She's like, listen, when I was younger, we were homeschooled. And my mother and my father molested us. Her words, not mine. And I don't know if it's true, because I know I'm dealing with a liar. But I took her on her words. She didn't want her son in that environment. I go online, I said, well, Layla, right here on your profile, it says you got a sister. She works at Dunk Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know if she still worked there, but she worked at Dunkin' Donuts. Why can't we take you over there? And she was like, I can't go over there because when I went over there, she made me and my son sleep out on the porch. I said, Layla, your own sister, knowing you homeless, made you sleep on the porch with your one-year-old son. That's what you want me to believe. And she was like, yeah, you know what? I believe it now. <laughs> After seeing her action, I believe it. See, now, so Tiffany, that next day, took her around to all the homeless shelters in muscle shows one like two or three in a couple of churches and she came back she's like they don't want her there they say she's been there she's disruptive she's a runner and she don't want help they don't want to deal with her no more and they telling us she said, they, the woman told me personally or told tiffany personally that if you deal with her this is what you're going to deal with cool you know people say that they like workers people say that they help us people say that they heal us but now here i am with a woman with a one-year-old baby. Let's say about this one-year-old baby. The baby's one year old and he already has rotten teeth in his mouth. And when she got up the next morning, she started feeding this baby cookies and candies and Skittles and honey buns, all the shit that she had been stealing. That's what she wanted to feed the baby for breakfast. I can see why his teeth is rotten. Layla, here's some breakfast. Here's some food. Here's some vegetables. Feed this to the child. Get this to the child. Oh, he don't want that. He won't can't. He likes to eat what I eat. This is the mentality that I'm dealing with. Okay. So I tell Layla. I tell Layla. I said, Layla, listen. I don't really just want to put you out on the street. I don't want to just put you back out there with this little boy and y'all homeless and you pushing the buggy. I said, I tell you what, you can stay here. I said, you stay here. Let me teach you. I teach you tell. I train you. I even help you start, start off your own business if you want. Whatever you want. But so you ain't got to be out here with you and your son pushing these streets trying to find out where you're going next. Layla decided to stay. I said about two weeks into it, a car pull out in my yard, and I go out there. And there's some woman sitting in the car talking about where Layla's at. So I go back and house Layla, there's some woman out here, and I don't really let people pull up in my house. Who is it? She said, oh, that's the girl that left me. She came back to get me. How long have you been stranded? I said, okay, Layla. You finna go with her? I mean, I don't want to be a burden. I said, Layla, listen. <sighs> Woo! It's your choice. You can stay and we can continue to grow because you already see what I'm doing. Or you can go with her. Layla decided to stay. And as Layla stayed, I got the Zer Layla actions. You know, I got a one-year-old boy here and he ain't got no teeth in his mouth. I mean, rotten teeth in his mouth. And this girl sits him up in a car chair at the kitchen table, doesn't strap not, nothing, not even balance right, and he falls out and hit his head. She takes him outside the next day, and we got a... Wow, wow. Thank, uh, thanks, Mag, but uh, I don't have it uh, set up to the sound. So everybody type in the cat eye uh, emojis. <laughs> oh, I, I got the wrong one. I got the lizard eye in there. Oops. Yeah, so everybody, you look like this when you smoke, I guess. There you go. So thank you very much, Mag. I don't have it set up to uh, have audio so that I can, you know, if I, I just hit pause if I have something to say and then it doesn't go over the top of it. <laughs> wow, look at all those. <laughs> look at all those eyes. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. concrete porch slab and she sits up in the same goddamn seat and the boy falls and hit his head on the porch then still not learning her lesson she sits him back up in the chair to where he falls off the porch yeah she loves her son but boy now i understand why she told me child services were trying to take her yeah so it sounds like you know what he's saying Unless he just sat around and concocted this really long, complicated story. 
Um, you know, it sounds kind of like he's, these are observations that he had. And they kind of match the reality, right? You know, like the family's even like, well, she's made some bad choices, but she was really coming around. Well, okay. <laughs> this guy seems to have been there and have witnessed it. So we'll have to see. We'll keep listening to it here. Um, and see if we can find anything that seems suspicious. Where's your child from? Now I see why. You got rotten teeth, you're dirty, you're nasty. I don't you're think it's weird at all, this. actually. Kind of makes sense. You dropping him on his head. <sighs> I think what it is is people who think this guy's guilty already think his story sounds weird because they want it to sound weird instead of actually listening to what he's saying. So now, let's fast forward a little bit. So now, Layla. Well, why? Uh, she was homeless on the streets. This guy is like one of these sort of, um, go look at his Facebook page. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> why is it shady? It doesn't seem shady that he invited her to stay there when she was homeless walking around on the streets. Wants to help put in some money, and I told her that's unnecessary, but she's used to doing what she do. So she likes to go on data sites and just meet guys, just meet guys. And then when she meet him, she'll just get in the car with him and go. So I used to say, Layla, just leave your baby here with me if you're going to get in the car with these guys. And she's like, no, I'm just playing them out their money. And that's why I take my son because I use them as a dick shield. How you? How am I going to have sex with you when I got my son with, you, with me? So I take my son everywhere I'm going. I said, yeah, Layla, but that, that dangerous that you get in the car with these guys that you just met online with your child. She's grown and I ain't got no control over that. She grown. Layla used to walk off and go to the store. It's about a mile to the store. And then when she come back, she'll come back in a car with some guy that she met at the store that just gave her a ride. Layla, that's dangerous. You shouldn't do that. And don't have them pulling up in my motherfucking yard either. Because I don't play that. This is the mentality of an individual that I was dealing with. Two months. Two months into Layla staying with me. She made contact with some friends from Jasper. The first guy came up there. And I was like, okay, okay, Layla. I ain't going to, because I don't really let people come to my house. All right, Layla, go ahead and let them come over. So the guy come over, they stay outside, they talk. Then she come back and said, one of my friends finna get ready to come pick me up. He's from Jasper and we getting ready to go and I'll be back in two or three days. I said, okay, Layla, I'll see you in two or three days. So the guy, the next guy pull up and I don't ever even go outside and she outside talking to him, boom, boom. I'm in my room, I go to sleep. When I get up, Layla's gone. But not only is Layla gone, a lot of my shit is gone. <laughs> and she stole my cat. My cat disappeared, man cool, beautiful cat, Haru. She stole my cat, y'all. And now here it is. She comes back after two days. I don't even say nothing. I let her stay in that house for two more days before I even address this issue of some of this missing shit. And what I noticed was this girl been sleeping with this cat, playing with this cat every day. Now, this cat could have ran away. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible my cat just ran away, y'all. But now here it is. And I got a Maine Coon. And you've been playing with him and sleeping with him and, and, and everything. And now, for the two days that you've been back, you don't even notice he's missing or don't even address the issue or ask, where is he? That's how I know you got my cat. <laughs> and so, now, I address the issue with her. I confront her. We argue. And I tell her, she got to get the fuck out. I can't have nobody in my house stealing from me. I can't. I'm giving you too much. Ain't nobody giving me no money. Ain't nobody giving me the, no government so, support. Here I am. Hey, 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 Cairo, what evidence do you have that the cat ran away? Just your gut feeling just I mean he's just he just gave a good reason why he thinks she took it because she spent days playing with the cat and when she came back she never asked hey where's the cat all right so that's circumstantial evidence trumps any sort of opinion that anybody might have here I am taking care of two women and two children they name one of them mine <laughs> Uh, okay, you don't even know what this is. This is the case. Remember the one in Florida where the girl, um, she drove down there with her kid, and then the kid was found wandering on the streets, so like a one- or two-year-old child. And they found the, the kid, and they couldn't find her. Then they eventually found her car in the Walmart parking lot and so forth. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Since we light workers, since we help people, well, here I am helping people. Here I am, I just took someone homeless off the street. Her and her son, and I gave her a place to stay, and she just stole from me. So you know what? And this guy here is the guy that she went down to Florida to meet. Because remember, that came out later. 
Hey, thanks, Billy Boy Blue, and oh wow, my mouse isn't working. And uh, Gloria Butari above, and also Shelly Ann. I'm gonna put it back out on the street. So now here we are, and she's crying. Oh, I can't know. I don't know. And all that other bullshit. Lip service. And I'm looking at her son as I'm getting ready to put her out my goddamn back door because she don't deserve to get put out my front. You finna get, you finna go out my back door. And I look at her son. Why did I look at him? Because he's crying. This is a little boy I've been taking care of for two, uh, two, almost two months now. And my heart break. <laughs> she found that last little piece of heart that I had and she broke it. And I'm like, Layla, look, look. come here. Because you don't have nowhere to go. So why are you stealing from the only person that offered you a place to go, that offered you a job, that offered to teach you, that offered to give you support, and ain't trying to have sex with you, ain't trying to manipulate you, ain't trying to get in your panties, ask you for nothing. And you want to steal from me. Here we go. I let her stay. But you know what? I got my own plans right now. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I got to get her out of the house because she ain't going to do the continue to take. See, I understand that she's a thief. I've been a thief. I understand that she steals. I steal, so I ain't gonna pass no judgment on her. I just want you to change like I change. A motherfucker can change, y'all. You can look at a report, or you can look at a person felonies and say, oh, this is who they are. No, that's what's on paper. I'm in the present. I tried to bring her to the present and out her past. Here we are. And I decided to manifest Layla a car. Yeah, yeah, let her get you away from me. And so now, I think it took like a week or two. Uh, it didn't take much longer. I don't think she stayed with me much longer after that. Maybe it was, maybe it was a month. Maybe it was a month. And we manifested her a car. The first time Layla leaves my house. Here you go again. Here you go. Second time she leaves my house. In her car. So much stuff turned up this. Oils. I'm talking birds, eggs, stones, crystals, about this size. About 50, 60 of them. They just gone, obviously. Oh, so I'm mad. <laughs> oh, we exchange all kind of texts back and forth. I mean, you gotta admit, he's weird as hell, right? But I'm trying to just listen to the story, um, you know, so you can tell, you know, she's stolen from him, you know, some motives here, but I don't know. It just seems like he's just telling this big, long story that sounds kind of legitimate. <laughs> I, I didn't take your stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Layla, come on. Okay, so here it is, and I hexed him. To you return all my shit, to you return all, everything that you took. You're going to remain homeless and everywhere that you go. Yeah, so she hexed her. You know, he's sort of this weird, um, I don't know, if you look at his Facebook page, a mystical person who, preacher type. I'm not really sure how to explain what he seems like he is. but People are going to try to take your son from you. That was my head. Yeah, I, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. I don't know what to make of this guy. That's exactly what you're saying. I, I don't know. And that's interesting because I don't have a feeling either way. Like, oh my God, he did it. Um, I actually lean more towards that he's just telling this story from his perspective, and he's a little weird, and that's it. And now here it is. He could very well have something to do with it. Yeah, y'all gotta realize I'm all the way thorough, and honest. I don't play. So now here it is. I say about six or seven, eight months go by. Me and Layla make contact. And forgiveness is good. And here we are, we boom, we on a new journey together. I'm showing up online because here she is and she's still homeless. Living with some man that she just met. That picked her up on, on the way while she was walking down the street to go to work. So she said, I don't know. Here she is and she's homeless. Yeah, the thing is, is he, if you go to his Facebook page, he posts like 20 times a day with little comments. So this guy, is a he talks a lot. You can tell, he's got a lot of stuff going through his mind. And this is just, it seems like it's kind of matches how his Facebook page is. And there's nothing really evil on there. I didn't see anything, I scrolled through it. 
but maybe there is. I went all the way back to the 27th when she went missing, and it just seemed like regular posts even then. Okay, Layla. I'll go ahead. Let's, let, let's go ahead. I'll teach you. Boom. So I'm showing up online, and I'm teaching her tarot. Continue where we picked up at. Last left off at. We picked up. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right, Curious Georgia. So that's why I always tell people, don't type in stuff that's in the video, okay? I've told you that a thousand times, but there you go again. Okay, it's just let people watch the full video um, as it comes out. Where we left off it, because you know what, Layla's a witch, <laughs> natural witch, and so powerful. Because I wouldn't pour into her if she wasn't. So I'm giving her everything that she asked for right here for free. I charge five hundred dollars a month, and now here it is, and I'm teaching this girl for free that then stole from me. You can't tell me about my motherfucking heart. Couple months go by, me and Layla, we own it, all contact. <laughs> but we headed in the right direction. And she says, I want it. I'm tired. If you want it, Layla, got it for you. Same thing that I offered you before you left. Still right here for you. I said about another month or two, because I think she's off in Ohio. Go by. And we really ain't talking as much, but we message. We good. Now, this is where I got to kind of shift the, the, the focus of this story to Christina Lawson. Christina Lawson is my intern. I met her around this time. She had been following me for three, four years. And finally, we talked. Boom. She joined the mentorship, y'all. So now here we are. And me and Christina, we're meeting up for meetings. And she lives in Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. And then... During the course of our lessons, she started telling me about herself. She told me that she had a infection that attacked her heart. She ended up having to get a heart transplant. And then when they put the new heart in her, her body rejected the heart. Then on top of that, she has cancer or caught cancer. And when she began to tell me about all these things, I understood the nature of her problem. I understood some things that the medical doctors with all their certificates that they got up on that motherfucking wall and all that medicine that they got in their goddamn cabinets didn't understand. You replaced this woman's physical heart, but the master of the house wasn't consulted. The heart chakra wasn't consulted. Energetically, the heart chakra is rejecting that physical heart and throwing your body into chaos. And you need someone who has attained a certain level of mastery that can take part of his life force and put it into you and fix the problem energetically. Realign your heart and your heart chakra and the rest of the <laughs> frequencies will vibe together. So I came down to Hollywood, Florida because one of my students was sick and having to go to the hospital two or three times a week. And I began to pour into her holistically and magically transform her life. Boom, boom. You need to do this, you need to eat this. Boom, let's go out here to the beach. Yeah, so now he's trying to like sell what he does. Yeah. Mm, whole nine yards. I don't know, but he's making an excuse of why, why he's is this down important? there. Because so. she was the reason why I was still in Florida. Yeah, so he's explaining why he's down there. But Once I got down there and started healing her, y'all know the mental and the emotional healing always comes before the spiritual. During this process, Christina ended up getting sick, caught pneumonia, and had to go, and I had to rush her to the hospital. So now here it is, not to rush this woman to the hospital. And they won't even let me go up to see you. Yeah. Corona. And she was laying in the hospital dying. This same woman, this same woman who I came down here and started pouring energy into and started healing and started training her to be my apprentice because she's finna assist me. Help me take care of my business. Help me schedule. Uh, -huh. Let me train you how to do tell. 
And so now, while she's in the hospital, while she's in the hospital, and now I'm not gonna leave Florida. Why am I not gonna leave Florida? Or why wouldn't I leave Florida? For two, three weeks, I stayed right there in Florida and I don't even live in Florida and hung out because I'm waiting for her to get out the hospital. Because she ain't from Florida and I don't want to leave her stranded. Without no help, no support, or no family. I was it. I'm it. So now, here we go. And now, I'm getting ready to go down here to Key West. <laughs> on the beaches and go down here in, to the Everglades and deal with these alligators. And Christina was the person that was supposed to be helping me, but she can't because she's been in the hospital for two, three weeks at this time. I'm back on the phone with Lay Layla Cavett. <sighs> she said, oh, I had a car, a Cavalier or something, and I traded it for a truck. I said, you traded your car for a truck? She was like, yeah, it got a little, couple little problems with it, but yeah. So I'm like, Layla, show me the truck. And she showed me the truck. And I'm like, shit, Layla, I need a truck like that. I need to charge just like that because I'm getting ready to go down here to the Everglades and shit. I don't want to go down here in the car. I said, shit, let me buy that truck from you. I'm not selling my truck. I like Layla. Come on, sell me the truck. Now, here's the thing. If you're lost, that means you're just kind of listening to, you're just chatting away but not really paying attention. Yeah, so he was taking care of somebody else. That's why he went down to Florida. And now he's about to explain why she was down there, okay? Hey, thanks, Billy Boy Blue. Because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Layla's supposed to be coming down to Florida at this time. She's supposed to be coming down since Christina in the hospital. And she's going to help me till Christina gets out the hospital. So she's going to be the one holding the camera and helping me. Y'all's like, why are you getting Layla? Because she's a survivor. I'm going out here into the woods, into, into the Everglades. You don't take nothing but survivors with you. And so now, she says she wants the job. She says she wants to be our apprentice. She says she wants to finish... So Layla says she wants to be his apprentice. She wants the job. She learn. She says, I'm going to come to Florida. I said, Layla, sell me that truck. Layla said, give me $3,500. Give me $3,500 for the truck. Now, I said, Layla, what's wrong with the truck? She's like, well, there's something wrong with the, the gas line and spark plugs. And uh, I said, Layla, I'm not going to give you $3,500 for a truck that don't run. You're going to have to drive that motherfucker to Florida before I even give you anything. So now, under my understanding, I'm going to say this again. Under my understanding, I thought she, I was the reason she was coming to Florida. So now, Layla's going to take 3500 and stay with me. We got a truck. We got a car. And now I'm going to get her a place for her and her son. And we're going to set up business. Now, you might ask yourself, why did this girl drive all the way to Florida? To meet some guy. Yeah, because she knew me and I had taken or taken care of her and her son for a number of months. So I showed that I was able to not only support her and her son, but another woman and her son and my motherfucking self. So she knew she was going into good hands. Now, Layla says that she was coming to Florida. And just like I told the police department, when I talk to them in person, it took her four days to make an eight-hour trip. And I thought she was playing, and I thought she was hustling me, and I thought she was wasting my goddamn time. Same thing. I said, nope, 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 because this is what she do. She lie, and she'll manipulate you, and she'll trick you. And I'm like, oh, damn, why this girl, I supposed to be going down here to Key West and in the Everglades, and you wasting my time, Layla. I'm finna go. I ain't got time for this. Oh, this is messages that I showed the police department. Four days. I'm five hours away. Then she go back. No, I'm eight hours. I'm, I'm six hours away. No, I'm two. I showed this to the police. I just want y'all to see the inconsistency of what she's telling me. An eight hour trip took her four days. So I don't know what she was doing in Florida during those four days. But as I showed the police department, this is what time she showed up to me. And this is where we were standing. And this is where the camera was at when she got here. When she pulled up at Racetrack, which is right uh, a couple lots over from Walmart. We pulled right over there to Walmart. Right over there. Where, where her truck would park at? Mm hmm Yeah. Let's talk about it. And then she got out her truck. Did I get out too? I think I got out. Did we hug? I, I, should, I don't know. She got in the car with me. Boom, and we pulled off, just like I told the police department. 
We went to Pollo Tropical in Fort Lauderdale about her and her son, a feast. And then we went right out here to Fort Lauderdale Park. Fort Lauderdale Park. Park Beach. And we ate. Her and her son. We ate. We smoked weed. We got high. She went out on the beach. I went to go work out. We stayed out there for a couple of hours. She got in the car. Now, of course, we didn't discuss business and things of that nature. That ain't none of y'all business. Then we went to the Cheesecake Factory to get something to eat. That's also on camera, too. They, I'm pretty sure they can pull that up, too. Now, <laughs> once we left there, I think we ended up eventually going back towards Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, Hollywood. Bing. This is the exact same thing that I tell the police officer. Man, I was asleep. We pulled up to the gas station. Boom. When I pull up to the gas station, it's some, it, it, it's some guys in a car that she talking to. These guys look for me because it's like some motherfucker that she was talking to at the beach. And you just got no lady. She's a friendly motherfucker. She don't care nothing about your boundaries. She would tear your boundary down and start a conversation with you. And you're going to talk to her. So this is her energy. This is her frequency. And like I told you, like some guys that she was talking to at the beach, but I'm not sure. And like I said, it seemed like she was down here longer than what she was telling me. So I don't know if she know him or not. But when I, when we pulled up to that gas station and I was waking up, she was already in a fucking conversation. And I told them, just, just pull back up the cameras. Pull back up the cameras. And then you'll see that she's talking to some guys in a black car. Right there at the gas pump. And now me waking up, my ego, my ego, because she's had the conversation and this guy asked her, do you like the party? That was just that word. Do you like the party? That's what I'm hearing as I wake up. And then I'm like, damn. Don't these dudes see me? They can't see me in the car. So I get out the car. It's my ego. <laughs> and I walk right over there and said, nah, nah, nah. She don't like the party. She good. Like, and they're like, oh, uh. And then they pull off. Now, I go back around to her and I said, like, what the fuck is that? She's like, nah, I know them. It's cool. I said, Layla, how the fuck do you know them? You just got to Florida. You don't know them. She's like, yeah, yeah, I do know. <sighs> Layla. Got her and her son and got in the car with those guys. I want y'all to hear me. I'm at racetrack. Walmart, Walmart is like not even a not, it's not, it's, they basically almost right next to each other. And this is how I explain to the police officer. So I want y'all to hear me. So now when she get in the car with these guys, and I said, it, it gotta be on camera. That I leave racetrack and go right over there to Walmart parking lot. Right there, right there, right there, right there in the truck. Shit. Boom. And I go to sleep under the understanding she'll be back. This is what she do. When I wake up in the morning, she didn't come back. She told me she was gonna sleep in her truck. She didn't sleep in her truck because she never came back. So now I get up in the morning. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and like I, my, 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 my whereabouts. First of all, Walmart, cameras, car, and then when I leave Walmart parking lot, I drive to racetrack, again, cameras, and then I sit there all day because they had free Wi-Fi and I want to get off my data. So I'm sitting there all motherfucking day long on camera, going in and out of racetrack, talking to the clerks and everybody in the store the whole day. Besides when I went to go get some weed <laughs> and came back and got high. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about it. And then after, after Layla didn't come back, I think it come out. I, I mean, that's one of the things that was a little bothersome is that he's so aware of being seen on camera in different places. You know what I mean? I gave her $3,000. And, and also, how do we even know that she was even there? I mean, the thing is, is I think it, there must be some video footage that maybe proves what he's saying, or he'd already be arrested at this point. I mean, we're talking, you know, this is 12 days later. They would have at least, you know, been all over his ass saying, well, that didn't happen. So. For that truck. Yeah, same thing I told the police bar. I gave her $3,000 $3, in cash the moment she got in the car with me, because that was our understanding. With an understanding that I was going to give her 500 more when she helped me clean that filthy motherfucking car out. Oh, and thank you, Jennifer Cochran Fent, up there. Thank you very much. 
or truck. <sighs> she never came back that day. Or let's just say she took too long to come back, according to my understanding. And I said, you know what? I'll keep that $500 myself and I'll clean this motherfucking truck out myself. While I'm cleaning out the truck. Oh, I just want you to understand. Yep, I fucked up. See, because she told me she was selling me the truck and I gave her the money. I said, we'll just handle the paperwork when, when we... See, this part here is interesting because it's really detailed about the truck. You get back. When we get back, we'll just go ahead and boom. I don't feel like they're going through all your junk and shit that you got in this car. We'll just handle the paperwork when we get back. But when I got to that store, Layla had another plan because Layla got in the car with these guys and I felt like I was playing. I'm going to show you why. Because when I clinked out the truck, I want to be very specific about what I said. Layla told me that she had took her Cavalier or her car, this was about two months before, and traded it for a truck, almost an even swap, which didn't sound right either. Didn't sound right either. But now, when I go clean out the truck, guess what, y'all? Y'all know what I'm finna say. The paperwork ain't in the truck. There's no title to the truck. I'm getting nervous now. I'm feeling played now. Oh, there's a title in the truck, though. A title to the Cavalier that she said she traded for it. And a tag to it. This girl that stole me a, sold me a stolen truck is my greatest fear, right? Maybe she just took off with the 3,000 with those other two people. Who knows? If this guy's telling the truth. Hey, thanks, Kit Kat. Hey, your chakra is indeed high. I parked that motherfucker right back at Walmart. Right back at Walmart. I got in my car. What did I do for the rest of the day? I think I went back to motherfucking racetrack. And the beach is just what I do. As I'm waiting for Christina to get out the goddamn hospital. Now, here it is the next day. The next day. I think I immediately left racetrack yep 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 on camera on camera yeah i slept in the motherfucking parking lot which is right next to walmart and then i drove over to walmart drove over to walmart with the understanding i'm gonna go to key west y'all and then i'm gonna go down here to the everglades and i ain't got time to wait on this girl to come back here go day number two and she ain't back she the window on the passenger side of her truck was broken and down so I go over there and I park and I go inside my car and I get a garbage bag and I walk over to the truck and I'm going to put it on the window because I'm going to be gone for about a week or two so it don't rain in the fucking truck. As I get out my car. Yeah, yeah, y'all. The story get good now. Yeah, yeah. As I get out my car and I'm walking, I'm walking over to the truck. I was like, ah, 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 ah. Police everywhere. <laughs> they jumped out. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, free. Hey, what's up? Who are you? Do you uh, I'm like, man, I'm Bar UL. Y'all might can call me Shannon Ryan just so we don't get this identification with you, but I'm Bar UL. Who, whose truck is this? It's my truck. I just bought it from Layla Kevin. What is there a problem? Well, how do you know her? And we, we go through this whole shit that I just told y'all. Now, let me break this down. And I keep asking the officer, is something wrong? Is that truck stolen? Because see, that's my greatest fear. My greatest fear is I didn't bought or received stolen fucking property. So I keep asking the officer, is the truck stolen? Because I'm telling you. I'm telling you who I bought it from. I'm telling you how much I gave them. And I feel like she didn't play me because the fucking paperwork ain't in the car. So what the fuck can I do with it? She was like, no, the truck's not stolen. I'm, 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 mm -mm. I talked to like four officers. I ain't even going out there. I talked to like four officers right there in the parking lot of Walmart. And all four of them questioned me thoroughly. And now when I'm over here, see these two women officers, they pull up. Or detectives. And I already know, two women officers, you can kind of feel the vibe. So, oh, oh, Lord. This yeah, well, he might think it was stolen because when he, maybe he did buy it for 3000 but she had the wrong um, title in the car, you know? So he thinks it's stolen when he's saying this. doesn't mean he's lying. It just means that that's what it appeared to him. Okay, I don't know anything, you know, the story is so long and complicated that it seems like it'd be hard to just sort of make this stuff up. Okay, um, but, you know, I don't know this guy at all, so I'm sort of in this weird nebulous area, like 50-50, you know, um, maybe 55-45 believing his story, okay?
But I'm not saying, oh my god, he's totally innocent, everybody. He didn't have anything to do with it. I'm just saying, it's, uh, he does tell this whole story, right? And it sounds mildly plausible. Okay, I know a lot of people have already, already written him off as being guilty, so they're always going to view everything he says in a different way. Okay. <gasps> and so now they start asking me questions. But the that line of question is different from the men that was questioning. That line of questions are, are more so what kind of mother was Layla? She's a good mother. You know, uh, would she ever been? No, she would never have been her son. I can tell you that right fucking now. She loved that boy too much. She might not have been the best mother, but she loved that boy. And so now here it is, and I go to telling them what kind of mother they, that she is. They're not asking about Layla being missing. They're not asking about none of that shit. They just want to know what type of mother she was and da 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 And so I go into all that with them. Now, now, I said, officer, y'all can search my car. Oh, no, we don't need to search. I said, no, y'all can search it. Like, like shit. Y'all can search it. Y'all got me pulled over here. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that I was the last person to see you. Now, here we are, and we're standing out here, and the police, the woman police officer, I can't remember her name, y'all, but she, she knows she was on. This is what makes me feel kind of funny about the whole situation. So now, I give the woman my phone. I tell her, you can go through it. Here go me and Layla conversation. Here go every conversation. She, she said, hey, I need to take pictures of it with my phone. Hey, go ahead. Do you know why Layla, I assume Layla was coming to Florida to see me. No, I don't. But I assume she was coming to see me. Now, here it is. And after the woman read my text message, kind of understood the story of me being fucked out of $3,000 in a fucking truck. She says, I want you to write a message for me. All right, what you want me to say? She said, have you contacted Thank you, Allison R. Uh, his name is Shannon Ryan. I put a link in the description, okay? So you can go right to his Facebook page and go watch this on your own instead of watching it here, okay? Feel free to do so if me interjecting every once in a while is too much for you. I think Layla at all. I said, no, I ain't messaging yet because I know what she do. I figured she'll come back, but no, I ain't messaging. I want you to message her and say to her, Layla, you fucked me again. I'm tired of this shit. I don't want the truck. You can have it. I'm sticking the keys up under the seat. I'm sticking the keys up under the seat, and you can just come get the truck when you want it. And then the officer told me, we want you to do that because we're hoping she'll come back to the truck. It made sense at the time. We hope she'll come back to the truck and think that she can make some extra money by reselling the truck again. So now I'm really starting to get just like, man, this goddamn truck, this truck got to, got to be stolen. It, it, it got to be. Now, let me tell y'all something. I don't know nothing about it. Hey, Jay, I can't believe you're so stupid that you think everybody said that they believe him. I'm saying about 50-50. You know, he seems believable because it's so crazy. Okay? And, you know, it's not like, I don't think everybody's like, oh, my, I 100% believe this guy. Okay? I think most people are, they kind of believe the story because it's really detailed and complex and long. Now, you might think, well, God, he's had days to think about it. Okay? But... Um, what we're not are we're not somebody like JP. He's one of those people that immediately, probably in the Broussard case, he immediately started saying that the husband had something to do with it because of the interview that he did, and nobody liked it. So he he was probably one of those people that was like, oh, he's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty. Where we on this channel actually said, hmm, interesting. Yeah, well, look how poorly the interview was. How they put the lights all over his face and they treated him like garbage in there. And they still put that out anyways, okay? And it turned out he had absolutely nothing to do with it, okay? So it's okay to believe him, all right? I, I believe him, uh, like I said, 55-45. Yeah, I don't think everybody in here 100% is like, oh my God, he's the greatest, he's 100% he's true. We don't know, right? We're just watching it and getting a feel for what he's saying and listening to what he's saying. And I think most people are just leaning towards believing him a little bit. Hey, hey, listen, guy. I don't give a damn what you've been doing, Jay. I don't really give a shit at all. I've been following it since the beginning, too. I just don't look at it every single day because there's nothing new every single day. You're just one of those people that keeps looking at it over and over and over and over again. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> what a clown. Jesus. Layla being missing at this time because I don't watch fucking TV. I don't know nothing about no baby being found in Myanmar because I don't yeah. watch. 
And he very this guy right here very well could be making up this entire story. Okay? He very well could be. But he might not be either. We don't have the evidence to know the answer to that question. You don't need to remove um, Jay's comments. Okay? Watch fucking TV. I don't turn on the news. I don't do none of that shit. So when I'm standing out there, I don't know the baby missing until the officers say. I mean, not the baby missing, Layla's missing. But the, ba the, the baby had been found in Memoir, and that's why they thought, and I'm like, no, nah, Layla would never leave a baby. Now, not only do I have this officer take keys out my hand and put them in the truck, then they say, as I get ready to go, uh, I think we'll go ahead and search your truck, your, your car. All right. Why are they standing there searching my car? One of my spirit guys said, go ahead and take that picture. Yeah, and take one of your spirit guides? Is that what he said? Hello. What do you say? <laughs> Man, you should join uh, with, uh, call up Chad and see what's going on. Then they say, as I get ready to go, uh, I think we'll go ahead and search your truck, your, your car. All right. Why are they standing there searching my car? One of my spirit guides said, go ahead and take that picture. Yeah, and take that one right there too. You're going to need those later. Just chill. And so now they search my car, then, and they said, did he say spirit guides? I can't make out what he said. Okay, you can go. Thank you. I said, Why do you know about I said, I just want to be clear about one thing. I said, okay, so y'all know I'm not from Florida. They said, yeah. And y'all know I don't live nowhere down here. I be in the car, I be in a hotel room, so I don't live. So they're like, yeah. And I said, and I'm, I'm, I just told you I'm getting ready to go down here to Key West, and I'm getting ready to go down here to the Everglades, and you're not going to be able to contact me or call me like you think you fin to. They were like, yeah, we understand. So I'm, and I'm the last person to see you, and y'all can let me go. They're like, yeah, go ahead, because we don't have no reason to hold you. I got in my car, and I rode off. Y'all got to feel me on this. Y'all got to feel me on this, see? Now, when I ride off, I say, oh, mm, I'm about 20 minutes, 20 minutes away from that Walmart. And I said that that, police, that one police officer called me back. And she said, I need you to come back to Walmart. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, uh, I need to take some pictures out your phone. I was like, oh, well. I can't come back right now because I got to deal with a client. But I'll meet you there in the morning. She said, you meet me there in the morning? I said, yeah. You want me to pull back up in the same parking lot? She's like, yeah. So when I got off the phone with her, I'm like, y'all, that just didn't sound right. I said, I just answered all your questions thoroughly, and now you want me to come back so you can take some more pictures off my phone when I just let you take pictures off my phone. And then it was also the fact that you want to meet me, but very specifically, you want me to go to Walmart parking lot. You could have met me at the police station. You could have met me anywhere. You want me to go back to this scene for a reason, and I don't understand why. The Pacific is the is an ocean. Okay, uh, you mean specifically? Okay, good. So now, thank you, Arthur Roy. Christina. Later on, and she tells me about the missing baby in Milmar. Oh, ah, and I'm like, oh shit! She's done my Layla. Now, <laughs> two and two starting to come together. And I was like, okay. And then now, now, oh, let's forward forward. I didn't go back. I think what Honey Hush was saying above when she got uh, timed out was that some people just chat and they don't listen to what's going on. She's not talking about listening to me. She's talking about on the screen. Okay. I to meet that office. Why? Christina told me that the Hollywood the Police Department came up there to see her and ask her questions about me. About where I'm at, where I'm going. I just want to re-emphasize re re this is a person that's in the fucking hospital, hooked up to tools and almost dying, and now they're harassing her. Not once, not twice, not three, not four fucking times. So, yeah, let's, let's, let, let's be clear on that. So now, they're harassing her. How do you know? Da, 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 answer the question. Boom, boom, boom. She explains everything clearly. And then the Hollywood police department said, well, we need him to come talk to us. And then she says, he talked to y'all yesterday. Y'all let him go. And then they said, no, that wasn't us. That was Myanmar Police Department that detained him. They, they questioned him. But since they're dealing with the missing child. I don't, I don't, I don't. What do you mean? That mean from last night's show? Supple Vita Boulevard? <laughs> Who cares? What, what does that have to do with what we're talking about? I don't get it. Because the child was found in Myanmar, but the truck was in Hollywood. So we're dealing with the missing girl, Hollywood, and they want to talk to me and they want to ask some additional questions. I ain't got a problem with that. But you know what I got a problem with? I got a problem with how this female officer just tried to trick me to come back to Walmart, Walmart parking lot so y'all can question me and probably detain me and arrest me and I ain't trying to go to jail doing corona and I'm a black man. You know what else I don't like? I don't like how Milmar Police Department had an illegal stakeout in Hollywood, detained me, searched me, then let me go, but took the keys from the truck from me, 
put the trees, the keys up under the seat, then have me send a text message that looked like I was angry about something. And then want me to come back to the scene after you to put the keys up under the, uh, up under the seat to have Hollywood Police Department, who's supposed to be dealing with the fucking truck to begin with and the whole situation, question me. You just made me look guilty as fuck before I come back to talk. Because I thought I was talking to Hollywood anyway. I thought that's who I was helping. They never identified themselves as Myanmar Police Department. Nope, 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 nope. I thought I was fully helping the Hollywood Police Department. That's why I gave them the keys to the truck with my fingerprints on it. <laughs> that's why I sent the message right there. Time stamp that picture because I sent that message right there standing, standing right there with the police department too. In this era of I can't breathe. <laughs> Y'all say, oh no, you should just go down there. Yeah. A black man that got over 15 fucking felonies. Got over 15 fucking felonies. A missing girl. A missing girl. And the black man said he the last person that talked to her. I just felt... You know what? There was funny. When I listened to this earlier, he did sound like one time he talked in a certain way where it sounded like a rhyme. It was pretty funny. So somebody just saw this, heard that something similar. Felt like they just tried to wrap this case up too quick. And like, yeah, he had something to do with it. And just lock him up when I've been nothing but cooperatives from the fucking beginning. It seemed like they were just trying to make a case. And I ain't the one. Now, do your motherfucking job. Find the girl. Now, here we are. And I also want to say, when that police officer was just questioning me, they didn't make it look like Layla. What's the word I want to use? Was missing. They made it more look like she had ran away, just to be honest with you. Now. The police department go up there to see Christina again and they start asking her for my phone and she won't give them my phone. Telling them to get warm they want my phone. Then the FBI go up there and they want the phone too. We just want his phone. We just want his phone. We want to look through his phone. This girl is dying in the hospital and that phone is her only way of contacting or connecting with me and talking to me daily so I can be her spiritual guidance and you want her to give up the only way that she got to talk to me. Once I find out the FBI involved, that's exactly what I needed. Oh yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, here we are, and they go up there again, harassing her about the phone, talking about we gonna just come back with a warning, we're just gonna take it. And she's crying on the phone with me, y'all. Y'all ain't gotta go through that shit. Y'all ain't gotta see someone dying in the hospital, hooked up to tubes and fucking crying. Well, he still seems a little bit hostile, J, P. Yeah, I mean, he, but, you know, maybe he's angry about it. You know, the whole situation. I don't know. I mean, it's a long story for him to have made up, but I guess if you're one of the people to believe that he had something to do with it and he finally wrote this all down and he had a daze to come up with this long story. Being harassed and worried and stressed. So now here it is. And I tell Christina, I said... Give them the motherfucking phone. Ain't nothing on it. I ain't did shit. Whatever, what, what, what do they want to look at? Some weird shit? Give them the fucking phone. Stop making it difficult. Ain't nothing on it because I ain't guilty. Now, now. Huh. Here we are. And I call the FBI agent that left his car with Christina, Agent One. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Sir, do you have a warrant for my arrest? No. Do you want me to turn myself in? No. Well, what's the problem? Well, we just, well usually when, some, when someone's missing, we're able to ask additional questions. We're able to ask additional questions, but you don't have a place of residence and you don't have a place. I told them that shit before they let me go. So don't try to make it look like I ran or disappeared. I told them motherfuckers that exact shit out my mouth and it's recorded before I left. Because I ain't scared of shit. That's why I told them. I ain't scared of shit. Now, here it is, and he tell me, yeah, and I'm like, okay, do I need to turn myself in? He's like, no, there's no reason for you to turn yourself in. I said, well, I'm on my way back to Florida. <laughs> and I don't want y'all <laughs> pulling up on me out of nowhere. Jump out, boys, like I done did something wrong or some fucking, some fucking criminal. I said, so I'm willing to turn myself in now, or I'll go down to Hollywood Police Department, my motherfucking self. Because y'all ain't even make, it, make me look out like I'm a bad guy. Now, ask yourself again why they ain't said nothing about me. 
Cause so now here it is. And I tell the agent, I said, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Only reason that I didn't go back, didn't go back when that Hollywood police officer detective was calling me because I felt like they was full of shit and they had fucked up, fucked up this investigation. How are you going to detain a man outside your jurisdiction and then want to re-question me again? <laughs> and I feel like you're trying to set me up. Why do I feel like you're trying to set me up? I mean, I okay, I had 15 years in prison. I got a number of fucking felonies and I just told you I was the last person to see you. You can just easily just say case closed. Yeah, it is. It's that easy. What about my heart, y'all? What about the work that I do? Is it because I'm black? Is it because I've been to prison? That makes me a criminal? Is it because I'm a witch? Is it because I talk occultism? Is it because I talk about darkness? Yeah, but what about that light that I talk about? What about the, the healing that I do? Y'all so easy to throw a motherfucker away. Y'all so easy to throw a motherfucker up under the bus and don't know shit. Don't message me <laughs> about teaching you nothing. Ain't no marines going on from this point on. Healing. Ain't no marines going on. I don't appreciate that. You know, I'm same people I help, the same people that try to throw me up on the motherfucking bus and didn't know shit. Here it is. And according to her own family, Layla was on crack. I didn't know Layla was on crack. What her family member made that goddamn comment to a new paper? Yeah, we had to run out of the house because she was smoking crack. So this had to happen somewhere within that year we disconnected because I went and gave $3,000 to a fucking crackhead. That disappeared right after I gave it to him and we ain't seen it since. And now the FBI investigated. Yeah, but another thing is where would he get $3,000? You know, he's sort of, he doesn't have a place to stay either. He's driving down there. I mean, where did he come up with $3,000? I mean, is, is, does this witch stuff that he does, does it pay well? Or, you know, that's a lot of money just to have sitting around. Hey, me, they think I'm dumb, but I ain't stupid. Yeah, you investigate me, but you ain't investigating me about no missing girl. I know you ain't. Because Hollywood Police Department could have handled that. No, no, no. Because when I tried to talk to the police, the, the, the FBI agent about the case, he didn't want to hear it. He was like, no, I really don't want to deal with it. I gotta, I'm going to transfer you to the other department. I just wanted to make contact with you. Man, get the fuck out of here. Really? You investigated me for something else in that other department, which is probably going to be Hollywood Police Department. They're two separate investigations. And so now what are you? Well, yeah, there, witches do exist. They're just not, they, they don't actually do anything. Okay. They're, they're, you know, it's just like an EVP reader. Psychic, that kind of shit. You investigated me for was Layla involved in something? I think so. And now they're trying to make a connection with me to her, but you got my phone. <laughs> Go through it. Search my whereabouts. Look at where I'm at. Look at where I've been. Look at who I talked to. And then you're going to find out uh -huh, you wasted your motherfucking time when you could have been looking for her. Do I think Layla's missing? Not at first. How can how can she be missing when she, she was homeless? All her family members cry. Oh, Layla, where were y'all when the girl was on the street? Where were y'all when she had nowhere to go? All these people got. Oh, we worried about you, Layla. Oh, we miss you, Layla. Well, what, why y'all weren't missing her when she was homeless? And she had nowhere to go. All you fake ass light workers that want all this goddamn attention. All these people want to put up pages and shit. Were we searching for you, Layla? Was you searching for her when she was homeless? Because I tried to give her a fucking job and a place to stay. And try to help feed her son and take care of her son. I tried to build something with them. What the fuck were you doing besides making a fucking post? I don't know who I am. That was a pretty good point. See, y'all follow a page. A timeline. You don't see the work that I do every day. You don't see the energy that I put in. I told y'all everything that I told the police department that I, and, the, and the FBI. And I want to be clear about this. I talked to the FBI agent, Agent One, and he told me that he's going to set up a meeting between me and somebody from some department so we can sit down and go down through the peculiars of this case the next day. Appointment, 9 o'clock. They didn't show up that day. 
and they still ain't showed up. Three they, they ain't called, they ain't, they, I ain't heard from them. Ever since I called the FBI, they have not called me. Yeah, so it might have been they wanted to have an appointment with him to go over all of his information, but then actually found corroborating information and went, oh, shit, you know. Me back, period. Maybe. That's just a I'm in Tennessee right now. I, I'm in Tennessee. If that's true, what he just said. <laughs> right now. But I'm on my way to Florida. I'm going to pull right up to that Hollywood Police Department. Because we're we trying to find Layla. Good night, Claudia Newman. Let me make sure, make sure y'all know everything that I know. And make sure that y'all know that I ain't running from shit. I just wanted to make sure everyone knows what's going on. But to some of you motherfuckers that got on my post saying all that slick shit, all that dark shit, oh, he's dark, oh, he's the coldest, oh, he's been to prison. Bitch, so what? And I'm magical. And I bless and I heal. You know, I'm about done with you light workers because you motherfuckers delusional. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So here we are, y'all. <sighs> Put some respect Fish, on my name. Please. Bar you well. <laughs> I did that for Zozo there. Yeah, so anyways, what'd you guys think of that? Pretty crazy, huh? Absolutely crazy. I thought it was... Um, you know, I'm just sort of, he could be making it all up and he can't, you know, it's a, a lot of it. How about this? Maybe let's say a lot of the story is true, but he invented parts that help perpetuate an alibi, that kind of thing, you know, like a lot of like, and that would make, you know, like 80, 20, right? 80% of it's true because it's easy to tell a lie when you tell truths in it. So, like, all of this stuff could be true. But perhaps something else happened regarding, you know, like, I, I would imagine if he was sold a f fake car and his man Coon was missing and those kind of things, it might make him angry about something. Yeah. Well, he sure got a lot of words in there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just weird, right? Why would he just give her $3,000 without getting the the title first? You know, like you give her 3000 you get the title, and then you would have said, wait, this is for your other car. I'm not giving you $3,000. Instead, he gives her 3000 and then later goes, oh, wow. I thought this was legit. You know, it's just that kind of stuff's weird. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a real video that he put out regarding being the last person and the person that Layla went down there to visit. So that's interesting, right? Yeah, and then the three thousand—that's what I said a minute ago. It's like, well, where did where did he come up with three thousand dollars just to give away? You know. Yeah, well, that's what he says. SJ's meme. That's right, Zozo, please. I'm not sure what that means, pug life. But hey, Nan Sullivan, are you still there? I can't. Uh, well, you brought up that street name earlier. I was trying to figure out what you were talking about. Mm, I don't know. I don't hear the death protest too much part of it. He was just telling a story. Well, why would he? It's not his kid. He talked about taking care of it a lot and how the teeth were bad and how the mom wasn't taking care of it. That's what he was saying. I mean, I'm not sure why he needs to be sitting there talking about his somebody else's kid over and over again. If he did, you'd probably have just as many people saying the reverse. Wow, that's creepy that he keeps talking about the kid. Wow, maybe he's some weirdo. Okay, so it, it nobody wins when they do these types of things. Uh, 
Well, you'll just have to go rewatch it, Alabama. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, it's an individual named Shannon Ryan on Facebook who did a whole fifty-something minute long interview, or not, uh, well, a speech basically it was himself talking into his own camera, telling us what his version of the story is. And it sounds like there's some truth to the fact that she was somebody that she had already stayed with once before down there. Because people were sort of like, oh, we, I think we might know who it is. Maybe. Maybe, JP. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely possible. You know, that, that, that crosses my mind, you know, when, when I was listening to it. He's just saying she got into somebody else's car, and maybe that's why he set up that whole story before about her irresponsible behavior and a pattern of just taking off with different guys so that then when that part of the story came up, the moment she disappears, it seemed reasonable. Okay? I don't really care, JP. All right, just you're you're talking too much, too many comments, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, um, I'm just pronouncing it the way I'm pronouncing it. I've heard it pronounced Layla and Leela all over the place, and we don't need your your quote expertise. Okay. Um, so I think it's it's possible that the you know as he he was setting up a persona of her in the in his video so that when he got to the part where he explained how she got into a car with some random guys again it seemed normal do you understand yeah so that's definitely something he could have been doing and nobody is going to be able to disprove or prove any of those other stories about when she was living with him for two months and he, she would take off with different guys Nobody's ever going to be able to prove any of that stuff. So he can throw that into a story and knowing that nobody can ever prove it. And now it makes it sound reasonable at the end that she got in the car. So what if he did, what if he told this entire story without that those the setup of that? You know, let, let's say he told the story, "Oh yeah, she came down, things were fine. Um, she uh, everything was great, and then she sold me a car, and then she just got into a car with some random people." Okay, see that would be would have been weird at that point because that would have been some some out of the blue behavior. But instead, we hear the setup of it. Um, other, you know, it could be all true though too. That's what I'm saying. It, but it makes it more believable at the end when she gets into a car. I'm I'm playing the devil's advocate part of it here. So I don't know. I don't know if he was building the persona earlier. So that when he tells that part of the story later, that it seems reasonable. Yeah, well, he seems to think it's on video. He's not nervous that it's not on video. See, what you got to think about that for a minute. He keeps saying, they've got to have it on video when she got in the car. Okay, because it was in the Walmart parking lot. But what if they never went to Walmart? Like... He just put the truck in, at Walmart. I mean, so, so the story could be that he did something to her, put the kid out on a street in a neighborhood, then dropped the car off at the Walmart, and then claims that he paid for the car and, you know, comes up with this whole story, all right? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm just coming up with the what-if part. I believe him about 55-45. Okay, that's where I'm at. Thanks, Kit Kat. Yeah, <laughs> Kit Kat. All, Kit Kat always helps out because at the end of the month, everybody, this channel is. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't care what you're saying, JP. I guess that's the point. So at the end of each month, we send money in to charities. We've sent ten thousand six hundred dollars so far this year to various crime charities. If you're new on this channel, you wouldn't know that.
Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I see. What, okay. I'm reading what you're saying, JP. I, I see what you're saying. At the very beginning, he says her name, but maybe he always pronounced it a certain way, and now he's hearing it pronounced differently. So maybe that's why it sounds different now. Okay, so he's like, oh, well, well whatever it is, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> have, you, have you changed your mind, Antonio? <laughs> he could be. That, that video right there could get him in trouble. But you know what's weird is he's actually put, the video's been up for all day and he hasn't taken it down. Okay, so it's not like, um, it's not like that's crazy. Yeah, he very well could be, you know, if, if if what he said in this video contradicts stuff that he said in person to those police officers, that's why it's a little bit dangerous to do what he's doing. If it contradicts that information, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a problem for him. And I mean materially contradicting it. Yeah, the three thousand dollars, right? All right. Yeah, so three thousand dollars is a little bit weird. Thanks, Zozo and um, Sarita and Curious Georgia, the one who always gives away the story before it's finished. Well, don't you think, Jay, that they would have checked the cameras immediately? The police. I mean, he's coming out now talking about it, but they already knew that the car was at the Walmart a week or so ago, or way before that, like two days later, a day after she went missing. So they're going to be checking the surveillance camera footage immediately. It has nothing to do with him going, oh, wait, now they're out of the surveillance cameras. Now I'm going to say something. They would have already collected that a long time ago. Okay, but the, the main part would be the... Walmart, because that would show that she got into a car with somebody else. <laughs> well, hey, Antonio, maybe he has some other clothes on different days, okay? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Claudia Neubauer, Dottie Caspi and Horses Rock, and Allison R. with a red cup of coffee. Yeah, I mean, he probably, I don't know where he was staying or anything like that. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know where he went, went, went to go get pot, William. I mean, he's been, he was there for a while before she showed up, right? She was there, apparently, he was there, uh, apparently taking care of that other woman. So he, he would already have his connections and whatnot. Let's see. Uh, right, I mean, there's people all the time selling pot all over the place, you know? And people who buy pot and drugs, they can spot somebody who sells it. They, they kind of know what they're looking for. And sometimes you can just walk up to somebody that you can tell is living there on the streets and say, hey, do you know anybody who's selling it? And then you just go find it. Yeah, right, Mindy. So what's weird is the story that he tells, you know, includes sort of like her stealing money from him and then taking off with these random guys. You know, the part that's alarming is that her kid, you know, but if you believe his story, she wasn't really that great of a parent to the kid. All right, so. Now, see, so he set up, if this, let me just say this. If it turns out that this whole story he just told was fake, he will be really one of the most clever criminals that you'd ever listen to. Because that means the entire time he was talking, in the early part of the video, he was setting up for things that he was going to say later. Oh yeah? Cool. 
Uh, that's why I told the story of the kid falling. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. The whole neglect part, the teeth were bad, all that kind of stuff. And then later on, he can throw out, well, she probably left him on the street. But I don't know. He didn't really seem to make it seem like she, she would just leave him somewhere. She didn't say something like that. Fifteen felonies and sells magic herbs for a living. Yeah, well. Yeah, he was fifteen years in prison. I mean, so he's obviously look at if you have a missing person and the last person to see them has this big long story and has fifteen years in prison, he's a he's probably a very strong person of interest for the police, even if he's telling the truth. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's cool that the FBI is involved with it. That's for damn sure. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he, he seemed to have the whole story just in his head as if it was a narrative story. Jay. Seemed like he had it, like it was in his mind. It was part of him. He knew the story. Now that was weird. Somehow I got my somebody withdrew super chats because it was up to a different number than it dropped. Oh well. That's okay. He must have took tips from Barry Manilow. How do you know, William? Sometimes people... I, look at <laughs> I, I got rid of my Honda Accord for um, 50 bucks when I traded it in. Yeah, I'm at uh, 49,900 at this point. I'm right on the verge of... I need another 100 subscribers. So if you're out there, please subscribe to the channel. Because we cover all kinds of cases, not the really popular ones that everybody else covers over and over and over every single night, covering the same case 24-7 because they know they'll get a lot of subs and views, okay? I'm an actual true crime YouTuber where I cover tons of cases, uh, cold cases, cases in the news, and, you know, if there's new information, we come back to it, all right? Let's see. Last night was pretty interesting. Although, you know, see, again, last night, like that video, last night's show got like 2,000 views, right? But it was crazy. We looked at uh, three 1960 cold cases where three women were murdered. And what was crazy, or men were murdered. And then at the end of the show, it led to um, finding these three women's murders that were connected. And then today, I got up and I researched two of them. And they actually did make an arrest of an individual who was responsible for killing two of those women and he lived in the area and he was basically a serial killer that they caught soon so I guess we'll be going over that another time remember that last night two, uh, those two women that were killed similarly they had three of them but two were almost identical they were stabbed in the neck twice and in the breast area four times and then two times for the other one those were in the same neighborhood. Like literally, they were almost two houses away from each other. And that's why they were like, whoa, these are totally related. And those, those were solved. 1965, the guy got uh, the death sentence, gas chamber. Um, but I don't know if he ever got executed. So we'll go over that one at some point. But. Yeah, so right now I'm still up in the air. I don't know for sure if this is a case where this guy is just making up stuff or, you know, maybe some of it's made up, some of it isn't. 
I just don't know. You know, there isn't enough information. There's a lot of these, you know, quote sleuths out there that come up with all this bullshit talking about this and that, kind of trying to associate different things. And I just don't do it that way. Yeah, see, like what Jay just typed in. You know, I read that too. And I'll, I'll never bring that up on the show, okay, because that kind of crap is almost always bogus. Let's see. That's right. We do it the freak way. See, what we do on this channel is we take information and we speculate reasonably on the facts of a case. Just like, every, but le, just like other people uh, claim to do, but they don't actually do that. All right. So you guys ready to go look at uh, the Crystal Rogers surveillance images that they released? And I found, I actually went on Google Earth and found those locations. I don't really have much more to say about this one. But maybe, you know, uh, in the next day or so we can do a show where people can call in and talk about their theories and try to prove different things. But I'm not going to take a call. If you start talking about, well, I read on Facebook where somebody said that's not going to work, okay? No, I just I don't believe. See, see, Jay, you believe those people right out, straight out, without actually getting any proof. That's what I don't believe. I, I don't believe in coincidences at all I, on this channel. I think that every time you see something like that, you go, there's no way. You know, just like the case that we were talking about. Well, it doesn't matter that there's screenshots of it, okay? <laughs> it just doesn't matter. You go do your own thing, JP. Start your own channel and talk about this case 24-7. I'm not going to do it the way you do it. Facebook is notorious for just absolute lunacy and ridiculousness, okay? And you get a lot of people, they'll fake shit. They'll try to create a relationship just to get people to think they're really cool and neat. Yeah, I just don't believe it. So until I can have it proved to myself, if I went and found the information myself and it looked absolutely uh, reasonable, I would believe it. But having somebody tell me that isn't going to work. <laughs> yes, oh wow, screenshots, those are never fake. Thanks, Kristen Cure and Amy Fountain. Hey, have a good sleep. Yeah, so we, we don't do the, you know, if you, if you call in, it's just going to be, these are actual facts. Now, um, let's see. I'm in one of those Facebook groups, and I didn't, I didn't see that, but I have to have something proven to me, so I won't be repeating somebody just saying, oh, I saw something on Facebook, and it said this, therefore it's true. Oh, no, there's screenshots and everything. Well, it's okay, Gene. I don't want you to block or remove him because he hasn't said anything other than his, oh, so you think you believe in coincidences? <sighs> now, if you watch the channel, I don't. For example, the Melissa Pesky case that probably half of you guys... Now, ah, see, there you go. There's Jay right there. Let's see. You, let me, let me, let me read Jay's comment. There we go. Gosh, girl, you call yourself a crime investigator or whatever. <laughs> but you, but you, God dang it, don't delete the comment. But you barely even know this story, buddy. Your channel is a joke. And so are you. You clearly don't believe it. <laughs> God, what a baby. Jesus. He's a total joke, okay? There, you don't need, there isn't a shitload to the case. Okay, he's one of those people that go on to Facebook and social media and believe everything he reads, and then it's really interesting. No, not really, uh, Jay. We're actually just watching the the video today, Jay. 
You're, you're not interesting. Have you, have you realized that yet? That almost everything you say isn't interesting. People aren't interested in what you have to say. I'm just watching what he had to say. I know the general facts of the case, and I'm listening to what he says. I don't need to know all the little uh, sleuthy shit that you try to talk about. What are you talking about? I didn't even talk about the basic information tonight. <laughs> You're an idiot. Go somewhere else, all right, man? Have a nice have a nice time. Tell you what, Jay, start your own channel and talk about this case 24-7 because you are an expert. You are one of the greatest people that have ever been on YouTube, specifically on this case. You are amazing. Now, good luck with your channel. I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll be sure to send some people over to check it out. Alright. <laughs> what an idiot. Like basic facts in the case. What are you talking about? We didn't even talk about the basic facts in the case. I just said that the baby was dropped off, you know, was found wandering on the street, and then like the same day or a couple days later the, the car was found the truck was found in the Walmart parking lot. Okay, that's it. We didn't go over any of the other stuff. We were just watching it. <laughs> yeah. Right. See, what Jay doesn't know is all the other stuff that I do here. Okay. Like today, I was on the phone with Colleen Fitzpatrick for an hour. Um, I literally, uh, like in the, the Crystal Rogers case, I was able to look at Google Earth until I found the location of where the bones were found. See, this guy only looks at one case his entire life, right? That's the thing. So now he's an expert. All right. Now you can come back in, Jay, and do some more of your ranting. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't claim to be... Oh, like, this isn't a case that I've been covering every single day. We covered it twice early on. There's really no, really any developments at all other than we knew that there was a guy that um, she'd seen in Florida. And it turns out that she'd been there before, and then, he, then she went back again. And that's probably why the family knew about this guy. They say it was from some sort of dating app or something. Yeah, Jay's just brilliant, man. I can't wait. It's going to be a channel called Leela Investigations. Don't life? Don't li What does he say? I'm not pretending I know a lot about this one. It's just not really... You know, it's... <laughs> no, I, I'm not really stalled, Linda. I'm not stalled, Linda. It's, it went up. It just went up from... 100 today. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, I don't care if somebody has their own opinion, Linda. See, that's what's so stupid. People like Linda are absolute jokes that show up on. They're the passive-aggressive morons. And you know how you know that? You know, well, apparently you are, Jay. You're only interested in that case because that's all you talk about. You are an expert on it. You are amazing, man. And Linda, the idiot up there, she doesn't know a damn thing. I mean, Jay's in here bashing the channel because he, he doesn't know a damn thing about it. He doesn't have a clue. Okay, He doesn't know that in the Delphi case, I came up with the flow of the crime and the prosecutor got a hold of me and said, wow, that's pretty amazing. We'll probably hire you if we ever take this to trial. Okay, He doesn't know that stuff. Okay, But you got idiots like Jay and Linda, whatever the hell her name is up there, who come in here and after Jay bashes me down and I say something back to him, all of a sudden I'm not letting him have his opinion. <laughs> oh, shut the hell up up there. You just... See, Jay is a joke too. Listen to Jay. When did I bash your channel? You mean a minute ago when you just bashed the hell out of it? You said that I'm fake and all this kind of crap? You're a joke, man. You can't even investigate your own words. You're, so, you're just an idiot. God, he's that stupid. Five seconds later, he can't remember what he said. <laughs> okay, all right, Jay. Yeah, that was after, okay? 
I never bashed your channel. Really? Are you joking? See that? You guys hear this right here? Read what he's saying. He never bashed it. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I am my channel. That's me. See, look at this total moron right here trying to pretend. That's it's not there anymore. Yeah, you bashed me, and that's my channel. It's Gray Hughes Investigates. You said you don't investigate anything, man. And Linda, wow, she didn't even read the guy's comments. She just comes in and, oh, <laughs> I have these other people that I watch all the time, so I'm gonna bash Gray right now. Yeah. Anyways, see you later, Jay. Good luck. Uh, that's about it. No, nope. never called you an idiot from the jump. I'm sure you might have thought that in your head, Jay. Right? All I said was, what are you talking about? I don't agree with, like, screenshots. You know, I need proof of something. And then before that, ah, just, I don't even want to explain it. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Wow, I knew somebody else uh, who mentioned that same phrase one time there, WB9FJP. You better be careful. I know somebody else who actually used that same exact term referring to me, but in a nefarious way. Yeah, I said that. I did. I said that after he said what he said. <laughs> you know, when he bashed the channel, I said, "Yeah, he's an idiot." Okay, that's okay. Thanks, Paisley Dreams. Back to you, Jim. Okay, now I'm going to move on to Crystal Rogers now, okay? The mayor of Bardstown has fired one of its officers for interfering. Yeah, so this is the, uh, we could do a quick timeline on here if you guys want. Who are you talking about, WB9? What, what are you referring to? Who's, is who okay? Yeah, I don't know what you guys are referring to in there. Sorry. It's another one of the shows off the rails because of idiots. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the timeline. It was July... Third, I just found this in, these are all in the description of the video, okay? It says, on July 3rd, 2015, Crystal Rogers, a 35-year-old mother of five in Bardstown, Kentucky, went missing and was last seen on the afternoon of July 3rd by boyfriend Brooks Houck, okay? Then on July 4th, authorities find Rogers' maroon 2007 four-door Chevrolet abandoned with a flat tire near mile marker 14 of the Bluegrass Parkway. So I think to me, it was somebody with enough forethought to realize, well, we got to make it seem like there's a reason the car pulled over. So they made the tire flat as it was pulled over, uh, you know, and pulled it over to make it and left the purse and um, what was it? The keys were in the ignition and her personal belongings were inside and around the car. And I don't, I don't think they had her cell phone, though. I can't remember that part. But um, she... I think it was just intentionally left there with a flat tire to make it look like she just kind of got out of her car to maybe wave down some help and then somebody abducted her. That's what they made it look like. 
Okay, then on the, the 5th, Nelson County Sheriff's Office released information on Roger's disappearance to media. And then on July 6th, well, let's see what this says. This is the actual, oh, it's not available anymore. July 6th. The mayor of Bardstown has fired one of its officers for interfering in a high profile. The family posts a reward for information leading to Roger's discovery of 25000 So that was just three days after she went missing. On the 9th, boyfriend Brooks Hauk gives an interview to headline news Nancy Grace saying he's 100% innocent. And four days later, Brooke Ballard, uh, sister of Crystal Rogers, speaks saying boyfriend Brooks Hauk's story doesn't add up. She said Hauk has been uncooperative with the investigation. Then on the 15th, Rogers' parents walked to WHS S11 saying, or talk to them, and say they'll do whatever it takes to find their daughter. Family in Nelson County community coordinates search efforts. On the 29th, Louisville Metro police searched several areas in continued attempts to find the missing Rogers. Nothing is found during the searches, which last several days. The community joins the efforts to find Rogers, ramping up searches and holding vigils and fundraisers to assist in law enforcement process. Tens of thousands of dollars are raised toward uh, reward uh, totals and trust funds for five children. I don't know what that, why they put the word totals in there. Parents of Crystal Rogers fight for grandparents' rights of Rogers' youngest son, Eli, Custody is currently shared between Rogers and Hauk. So they weren't married, but they had a child together. And, you know, now Hauk wants custody. And then Crystal's parents tried to fight for it, but I think um, Hauk won. The Bardstown Police Department suspends Officer Nick Hauk's brother of boyfriend Brooks House from the police force. Um, and then that's because... When Brooks was being interrogated, he actually made a phone call to Brooks during the middle of it and then told his brother to clam up. Bardstown Police Department holds a private hearing with regard to Nick Hout. Despite the meeting, no decision is made. All right, so let's play this because I think this has something to do with that. Okay. Crystal Rogers oh, has so been quiet. missing since July, and police now say they believe she is dead. Officer Nick Houck's brother was the last person to see her alive. Our Shay Ale uh, McAllister is Thanks, live Curious, in Georgia. Bardstown with details. All new at 4 o'clock. Shay? Thanks, Zozo. And uh, Paisley Dreams. Melissa, the Nelson County oh, that's so Sheriff's quiet. Department says that they still believe that the disappearance of Crystal Rogers is an ongoing investigation. However, they are looking at one suspect and one suspect only. That's her Rogers live-in boyfriend, Brooks Haug. Sheriff Department says that they still do not have enough evidence to make an arrest in the case, but the sheriff has eight pages of, quote, circumstances leading him to believe Brooks Houck is responsible for Roger's disappearance and for what may have happened to her. This comes only hours after the mayor announced his order for Brooks' brother Nick Houck to be terminated from the Bardstown police. Houck has been suspended from his position with the department since early September. Rogers went missing early July. The mayor cited the reasons for the termination include a phone call he made to his brother warning him about an interview the sheriff's department planned to conduct. He also failed a polygraph exam and then refused to cooperate for an interview with the Nelson County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Mattingly says he's not worthy of being a police officer. He See? then made it Boom. very clear that he believes Rogers is dead. There are certain things that people do that, uh, um, that when they exist on this earth, and she has vanished from Earth. And uh, I think it's safe to say that she's dead. Uh, Bardstown City Attorney says that Nick Houck has Dennis. 30 days to appeal his termination, but the police chief here in town says that Houck will not be welcomed back on the force as long as he's the chief here. Live in Bardstown, Shane McAllister, WHAS 11 News.
Thank you very much, Jay. And 35-year-old Crystal Rogers vanished July 3rd from the home she shared with Brooks Houck. Two days later, her car was found abandoned along the Bluegrass Parkway. Along the blue her car was found abandoned along with I Brooks Houck. Right Two there. days later, her car Maybe. was found abandoned along Let's the blue with Brooks Houck. Isn't that her car right there? That the white one. She shared with Brooks Houck. Two days later, her car right there. Isn't that her vehicle right there? Doesn't look like it's loaded up yet. I think it's that white one. Was found abandoned along no, the, the red. Okay, parkway. hold on. No, it wasn't the white. Later, one. her car was found. Brooks Hauk. Two days later, her. So where is it in this shot right here? Maybe that one. I don't know. Maybe it's not even on the scene right here. But it looks like they're saying that's the area right there. It would have been maroon. Her car was found abandoned along Thanks, the Bush and Bluegrass Beach Parkway. Lifestyle. Crystal's keys, her cell phone, and purse were all inside the car. Volunteers spent countless hours. And that's hours her dad right the there. And this, this is her dad, and he was murdered. Uh, like a year or so after Crystal went missing. And this guy was investigating the case all over the place. I mean, he had a, a whole binder and a box full of notes and information and then he was killed he was hunting with his grandchild i believe and then somebody pulled up on a highway and shot him and let me get to that case now shot him through the woods let me show you exactly what that looked like so i did find out where the car was found so I think it was found right here. I don't think that where I was just showing you was where it was found. I'm not even sure what that was. Probably B-roll footage that they had. Okay, so this is the Tommy Ballard. Yeah, so he was hunting with his son in, the, in this area. And somebody shot him. Probably parked their car right here on the side of the freeway here. And then went into the trees and shot him right in this position right there. If you go down to street view here, and they probably walked into the woods there, used the branch as a, almost like a stand, and then shot him. Right there. And again, you know, and then, then you realize also that there's an officer, Ellis, was killed a few, couple of years prior to that, and he worked on the same shift as... Nick Hauk. You know, so there, and he was ambushed at a, um, a freeway off ramp. Let me show you. It was right here. So it was really late at night. I think, what was it, like 2 30 in the morning, 2 in the morning, right around in this area. And there were branches across the road. And he stopped his vehicle to get out, but he turned his car so it was kind of like this. So it would block the road so no other cars would come. He got out of his vehicle on the driver's side, which would be the left side of the car. And then somebody from an elevated position up here, most likely, or, or actually it might even be more likely that it was up here, shot him and killed him. And it was an absolute ambush intended to kill him. I don't think it was random whatsoever. I think it was meant to kill him. They knew he was going to be there at that time. Okay, so back to, I'm pretty sure this timeline will probably have some of that. And countless hours over the next several weeks. Okay, so let's see that. And then October 16, 2015. Um, let's see. The mayor of Bardstown, along with the Bardstown Police Department, informed that Nick Houck was terminated. So we just saw that. Nelson County Sheriff tells media that Rogers is presumed dead. We saw that. Okay. Yeah. New information tonight on the crystal. Let's see. Oh yeah. So these. This is the new information right here. See these these images right here. These are surveillance shots. Uh, the FBI has released new surveillance photos of possible cars of interest in the Crystal Rogers missing person case. The photo shows three cars in two separate photos taken in Bardstown. The second surveillance photo. Shown was taken at 3.45 a.m. on July 4th, 2015. But, I mean, you can't make that out. So, this one here, you can definitely see these vehicles. And I wonder why they believe that 
these two cars in particular are of interest. Now, it took me a little bit to find the location because they said it was near a, um, I think it was, I think they called it a campground. Let me find this. Yeah, right here. They actually, yeah, right here. My Old Kentucky Home Campground. They said it was near here. So I was just kind of looking around. And then I, then I saw this pin that I have here. And this pin, the Caddyshack, was from the documentary on the case. So I forgot what that was about. I think it was just in reference to the car driving by there, maybe. But then I went over here, and I think, I, I think for sure this is the spot right here. Okay, I think those two cars that you're seeing are absolutely right here. And let me go back to the image. I mean, you can see, look at that. So notice the grass, the little angled grass, and then how it curves around like that. Well, there you got it right there, angled, and then curves around. And then also this little, this area right here, right? You can see that right here. Yep, that's the same exact same thing. Even has the writing right there, which you can see right there. So it's definitely the spot, and there must be a surveillance camera then on that building. I don't know if it'll be, well, it's May 2019, so probably somewhere up on here there's a surveillance camera filming out. So that was it. Let's see, what are you guys saying? There are many ex snipers turned hunters. Yeah. Well, good. I mean, if yeah, if you're a sniper, hunting would be simple. You probably figure, try to find ways to do it where it's harder. You know, maybe shoot over your shoulder. So this one right here, the FBI believes the red SUV is a vehicle of interest and is seeking more information about the driver. Well, you remember they had the coworker they were interested in, right? This photo was taken at 3.45 a.m. on July 4th, 2015, the night of July 3rd. Okay, so that's the last known date that she was alive. And apparently there's video of her and Brooks going out to the property according to Cass Lynn. And then there's video of Brooks leaving the property, but she's not with him. Something like that. Which is, I mean, it seems like if that exists, they seem like they would have made an arrest a lot sooner, right? This photo was taken at 3.45 a.m. on July 4th, 2015, the night of July 3rd. Uh, the photo was taken at the intersection. Let's see if we can find this spot here. The intersection of Balltown Road. Hey, and by the way, I'm sorry I have the, the trolls that show up sometime and then they derail me a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. So there we go, there's Balltown Road. Yeah, I could probably respond differently to them though. You know, when people try to call up and pretend that they're, they can run your show, you know, I probably just get a little too frustrated with them. I should probably just block them just like you guys do <laughs> yeah I got rid of what whoever that person was they just seem like they were just here throwing out stupid comments you know and they referred to me by a name that um, another youtuber called me one time on a post so I'm pretty sure that they were that person Okay, so it was 
Balltown Road and Pascal Ballard Road. Okay. So I can still follow. Okay, right there then. FBI. So this that seems like this is right in the area of the farm. So that's interesting. That there's a car driving around that time of night. So it curves. So what could it have been right there, maybe? Makes me think that that might be. Ah, you can't see it. You know what I think? I think that that's right here. Like, well, no, because where would the camera be? Can't be that. And there's no house there. And there's no house on that side. That's interesting. Because they say it's right there, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay. I'll try to work on that a little bit. Not engaging the trolls. All right, that's definitely something I, I could work on. Yeah. Well, thanks, Katie. That is kind of how I try to do it. And thanks, Chrissy Paradis. Yeah, see what's weird about this shot right here, there's a building obviously right here, right? I wonder if that's somebody's like garage door or something. And then there's another building right there. So I'm trying to find, I mean, could it, uh, and then it looks like it kind of curves around. Let me see. And this is the intersection. That's Balltown Road and Pascal Road. And they said it's right in this area. I'm just trying to think if it was right, if somehow related to these, but then there's nothing on the other side there, unless it was, hmm. Yeah, let's check that out again. <clears throat> you cut your eyeball. Hey, we'll give, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we got two people. That's wild. Yeah, well, I think if you cut your eyeball, you need to go to the doctor. I think that's sort of a given, right? Balltown, let's see, Balltown Road and Pascal Ballard Road. Photo was taken at the intersection of Balltown Road and Pascal Ballard Road. Well, the intersection is right here. So how could that have been taken there? That doesn't make any sense. There's a house on... So it must be like one of these has taken that shot, but then how come there's a building on the other side? I guess maybe, maybe something's been built since then. The satellite image here is 2014. So that's six years ago. Definitely could, well, no, but that was, that image was taken around back then. Thank you, Dadio Caspi and Horses Rock. Yeah, I, I, I read that. I just told you what it was. It doesn't also say anything. It says, was taken at the intersection of Balltown Road and Pascal Ballard Road. It's located right off of Laredo Road. Yeah, that's what they're saying. See, Laredo Road's out here. I'm pretty sure this is going to be, yeah, Laredo Road, 
And then you go over here. This is Balltown Road and Pascal Ballard. Uh, that's Bas Pascal Ballard Lane. Maybe that. Maybe there's a different one. Hold on a second. Now it's Pascal Ballard Road. Okay, so it's supposedly right in this area right there. It doesn't say anything else. It's just giving a reference point to be able to find it. I already read that one, Williams and Brano. I guess it could just be one of these. Well, let's see, this is now. And it's up a hill, so I can't see it. Yeah. Maybe like right up there. See, if it was on the side of that building looking that way, it can't. It doesn't seem like it because there's no road. It goes like... You know what? But they weren't very accurate on the other one, so now I'm just going to go look somewhere else. <laughs> they weren't accurate at all, as a matter of fact. Okay, so again, nothing on the other side of the road. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's... There sh it, it, it could be it's a driveway, and then that car is... But I can't even find anywhere where there's another one across the street from it. Like here, there's nothing across the street. There's something here, but that doesn't look like... That's not where they were saying. They said it was right there. Thanks, Jules23. Became a freak. Now you can use the emojis. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think what they probably did was Brooks brought her over to the property. She was killed on the property and she was put somewhere and then he probably called up his brother and said, hey, here's my situation. Then the brother picked him up and uh, you know, got went out there and they figured out what they were going to do with her. Okay, and then he went and spoke to the police, Brooks did. And that's what made his brother nervous. And you could tell, like, the brother just was talking too much, Brooks was. And when I mean too much, he was just over-explaining everything, you know, trying to be almost too helpful. And then his brother calls because he probably knows his brother. You might say the wrong thing. And, and so the brother called, and he quit talking, and then they ended up firing... His brother, which his name is Nick, from the police department, because of how he handled that whole situation. But he probably didn't really care, because apparently, as I've been told, the family has a lot of money. Yeah. Man, I wish these were 3D buildings. I could find this, figure this out in two seconds. Yeah. Right there. Just looking at it one more time here. I thought originally it was like right here, maybe, but there's nothing there. There's no buildings. I guess that's there, though, but then, I mean, that definitely could be it, but there's no building here. See, that's what I'm wondering, though, is, is there something there now? Although, that doesn't look like that's a drive. It looks like 
when you're looking at this picture right here, this looks like this is part of somebody's driveway in there. And this is like their garage, right? And then this goes out here. And then that's another road going by like that. So that car is going by and they said it's at that intersection. So let's say that somebody's own but see how there's nothing across here that could have been that, that other building. That's all right, I got it. Yeah, I've been down here already. It looks like that, but there's no, there's nothing on the other side. That's the problem. Yeah. I've already been down here. See, if it was this one, you would have seen a, uh, well, it would have been like this. There'd be a building on this side, which would be that. But it's really, it's a driveway inside the, somebody's property that's paved first. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah, see these guys, this isn't paved here in front of it. That's not paved. But again, this is 2014, so we don't know what's happened since then. But again, uh, but here, another thing is that 2015 is the, the whole, you know, that's when Crystal Rogers went missing. So it's not long after this satellite image here. Nah, sorry, William. Sorry, buddy. You keep telling me all this stuff that you have, you you weren't right the last time either. All right, let's see. Here we go. Yeah, I, this is where I thought it was originally, right here. That the car is going like this and turning, and that's what we're looking at here. But the problem with that is, as I pointed out, is there's a building right there, and here's this. It's not there. Okay, so. That's not there. There's also, that doesn't make sense. It's not right on the road there. And that's the intersection that they're talking about. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's almost like it's not really what they're saying, you know. Off. FBI efforts continue tonight in Nelson County, taking Crystal Rogers' car as evidence and heading back to the Hauk family farm. Federal authorities tell us they have a weekend of work ahead. The night team's Heather Fountain was back down in Bardstown to get a look at the search. Yeah, like the wrong picture. All focus on the Hauk family farm. The FBI leading the search for the second day in a row. This view from the sky shows federal agents searching one of the ponds on the property as other vehicles look at the land. There's a lot of commotion, people coming around. The Hauk farmlands back up to the home of Roger Livers. Kind of strange, especially when you can see tents and things from the pool. It's not the first time these acres have been explored by law enforcement since Crystal Rogers went missing, but former FBI agent David Byer thinks this time will be different. They will leave no stone unturned and they will scour that area for evidence, talk to people. He says the FBI can bring more resources to the investigation yeah, than local agencies, one, and Brown. like ground penetrating radar, giving agents a look at what's 15 feet below ground. One of the other things that they can bring to the table is the underwater search and evidence team, which is highly trained in... But what's uh, weird is they found her body, so what would they be looking for in these ponds? Like the gun, maybe? It's almost like they found the bullets, and now they're trying to find the gun that shot the bullets. Uh, trying to you know what I think they should do? I think that every gun sold should be test-fired first, and the striations and what whatnot should be put somewhere and um, you know it's sort of like the uh, CODIS right 
but every single gun is tested. You know, of course, then people can manipulate it by grinding it out and stuff like that, whatever. But maybe make something so that every gun is identifiable, but don't really tell people. I don't know if they have something like that. That way you can just tell whose gun it was, right? Everybody already knows about that, though, that ballistics can match it up. I don't think it's that way. If it was, they'd already know who shot this gun. Right? Well, maybe they do do that. Well, it was an idea I had, but if it already exists, cool. Okay, well... Uh, <laughs> So you get a new pistol with a spent cartridge. Who gets the cartridge? It gets sent off to the FBI database somewhere? So maybe it's something they're building now. But maybe people should be... Ah, oh shit, I don't know. It's. I guess it'll just take a while for all the old guns to leave society, right? Get the latest, most important news of the day. Yeah, okay, let me open up the Crystal Rogers information here. Okay. So on the show the other day, we we got this image right here. This is actually the riverbank, and this is what was found originally. Uh, it looks like maybe these are bones, I don't know. But it's interesting, all of this material that's inside the grave, if you will, of the body that was put in there. And you sort of wonder if they'll be able to associate some of this with um, the construction materials that the Hauk family had access to. And then here is the... Crystal Rogers vehicle that the FBI had just gathered up that had been in a storage unit and the mother had kept it in the storage unit and hopefully she didn't go out there or ever have it cleaned. That would be absolutely amazing. And then here is the some drone footage that somebody really got in close and that's after they dug out the body that was inside there. But see, there's the bank. Now, what I think happened was is that whoever buried the body there, we don't know for sure yet. It hasn't been even confirmed that that's crystal. But I think the person buried the body near the bank five years ago and that deep and then covered the body with stones and whatnot and wood. And then over, I guess they say that it's been record rains there and it's washed away. See the bank right there? It's washed it away. So originally, let's just pretend this is back then. They probably buried the body right there. Okay, but the bank got washed away and then it would reach there at some point. But so, I mean, imagine if I could extend this out 10 feet or so. So they bury her close to the river's edge for some unknown reason. I mean, I don't know why they didn't bury her back in there, but, you know, thank God they didn't. Because as the water rushed through, and as you can see, let me go out to the spot here. That right there. So this is the location right here on that side of the bank. So that's exactly how the water would wa uh, wear away too. So it curves around and the fast water goes on the edges and erodes the bank. So over time, like what would be interesting here, I guess what we could try is going like, let's see, that it doesn't have a lot of dates, but 2000 and, let's see, 2000, and, yeah, what terrible satellite imagery. So that's 2009. In 2013, you know, sometimes it shifts around a little bit because it's not, the maps aren't really that accurate. 
And so let's say it was right there. And this is 2014. Uh, what's really unfortunate because if this was 2016, you might be able to see a little dirt patch right there. But it's been, um, apparently the water was really high and it rained a lot and it wore away like, let's say five to 15 feet of this bank. So in this image right here, it's actually like right there now. So a body that was buried, let's say right here. Let's say originally the body was buried right there. And then the bank got washed away over five years. And now just the very edge of it is protruding from the bank. And maybe the water washed away some of the feet, for example. Feet, bones, and so forth. And there's still some left in there. That makes sense. And that drone footage we were just looking at. You can definitely see that hole right there. And then Cairo went out there too. Here's his here's his drone footage. I gave him the GPS coordinates. And as you can see, you know, the water right there would probably just kept washing away, washing away that bank. And it's right back there. I don't know what that means, Sassmer. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like 99% sure it's crystal. They just haven't come out and confirmed it. All right. I think that's why the FBI, after they got brought in to remove the body, they immediately started searching the Houck's property. It's pretty obvious. I mean, if it wasn't her, they probably would have went, oh, well. So it's absolutely amazing that somehow somebody stumbled upon the uh, the area see what's kind of interesting too if you look at this image that cairo took here see how it's the dirt on the top there so it could be that people were standing there made it look like that or you know when the body was buried there all those years ago five years ago they dug there and it just didn't quite grow back but usually weeds are pretty pervasive they just come in and boom 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 they can take over so i'm sort of leaning towards that that was um you know, people just standing there during the investigation kind of matted it down and made it look like that. And there you can see the hole in Cairo's video right there. See, this is one of those Mavic Minis, guys. You guys got to get one of these. Look how clear that is. And see, there's that spot again. Look how that spot looks right there absolutely clear so maybe there were people standing above giving orders talking to people down well here's what i think probably that is now that i think about it this is probably where they put like a little evidence collection area and then people down here would hand scoops up to people above because right here you know you don't want all the crap to fall back in the water so they probably made sure like hey you know handed it up to somebody right above you can't see anything? Oh. Does that make any sense? I think that makes more sense what I'm saying right now. I think that they handed the uh, bones and whatever they were digging out up because if you don't do that, it would all fall down. They probably had some kind of a collection thing and then slid it in and then handed it up to the people above. And then they matted it down right there. Oh, yeah, well, Cairo spoke to somebody that he just randomly bumped into somebody that didn't really know anything about the case, but he happens to live in the house where the mother and daughter were murdered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are the odds of that? And so then he said he has these ghost stories. I might have to play that on one of our paranormal shows at some point because he recorded the conversation.
Yeah. So let, now let's try to look at the Google Earth here and kind of maybe guess on how something may have happened here. What are you talking about, Yerp? Look in the what? You show up and just put like four question marks and... <laughs> Wait, what happened? When? Yeah, look in it by yourself, okay? I'm not interested in starting over the whole show just so you can learn something. But look up Crystal Rogers, Yerp. Oh, you don't have to block them for that, but you can just tell they're going to... They're probably not going to be a good... I'll unblock them, but if they make another sort of weird derogatory comment, then feel free to remove them. Yeah, just look up Crystal Rogers. I'm sure you'll be able to find something. On it. <laughs> you don't have to remove... The, all they said was thanks, you know? Right. Okay, so now let's let's look at this is actually how close the the whole area that they were just talking about. Even the surveillance footage they were talking about that we can't seem to find the exact spot. Even William Zambrano can't find it. I know it. Right, William? What do you want me to Oh, the drone video. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take another look at this another time. Um, and I just can't see anything where there's a building and then really nicely paved area. And then right across at a, at a kitty corner is another building. Okay. So again, this is six years old, but the surveillance shot is only is five years old. So it should be look somewhat similar. How come Europe was hidden again? What did they say the next time? Oh, they said the same thing again? Or Oh, wait, I was scrolled up too high. Never mind. <laughs> yes, Alifair, I'm going to start all over again. So if you look at it like this, the FBI was on this property. This is where the Hawks farm is. The grandmother, I think, owns it. And if we were to measure the distance from there to where the body was found, uh, let me do a line. It is 3.84 miles. That's nothing. Now, I don't think that they drove there with a v, like a car. I don't think, because the only way to actually drive there with a car is to actually literally go where Cairo was and drive over here, park your car, and then carry a body. I mean, I mean just kind of picture how ridiculous this is, right? So you'd park your car right here and maybe pull over to the side of the road, and then you'd have to, if this gate was down, you could maybe drive through there but then you'd act actually have to go through the water at some point. Because look look where this is. It goes here. You'd have to cross the creek twice. I think. Unless there's actually land. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, I didn't see that before. So look at that. I guess it is possible that there's this little strip right here that they could have gone through and around. That's interesting. Hadn't seen that before. Yeah, it's okay, you're just, uh, you know, look things up. Uh, let's see. They can go nearly everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. 
One thing I don't like, uh, no thanks. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe that is possible now. I didn't see that little narrow chute through there. Wait, you know what? Let's do a different time frame to see if we can get something. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> the next one over was absolutely perfect for that. Look how easy that is now. I didn't know. I just didn't notice that. I thought the river made a block there. But check this out. They could have driven right here. And I don't know. That gate probably just is a chain. I doubt there's even a lock on it. I don't know. Went through here. Look at that. Drive. Pull over. Bury the body. And then just get the hell out of there. That simple. Look how easy that is. What do you guys think? Now there are there are back ways to get there. You know, I'm sure that there's these little if you take your four wheeler and drive you know through some of these trails that go by, there's little uh, let's see. Like right here, what if you took this little Hall Simpson Road here? Kept driving around like this. And then right here you go off wheeling, uh, you know, off road a little bit. And <clears throat> let's see, how would that look? Can, can you do that? You know, maybe cross down, go up around. I mean, it looks like you could easily, with a four-wheeler, drive over to here and really not be seen. You know, go down some of these power line trails, that kind of thing. And then you could just drive into this area. And there's, I don't believe there's any water that you have to go through. Maybe there is, though. I guess you would. You know what? The only, you know, that's pretty bizarre. Because now that I look at it, the only place that makes sense now is that they went this way, right here. Because that is a creek right there. It was hidden on the other image, I think. Watch. So I didn't really see that because I was looking at this right here like it was cut off. But now that I open it up, you can see that the water goes through there. So you would have had to cross the creek. So <clears throat> now that you, you see that... And it's interesting, too, because it's in another county. So it's almost like they looked at a map, saw, hey, there's that little part right there. And then they drive right there, bury the body, and then drive right out. And this is what it looked like in 2013, just two years prior to her going missing. And as a matter of fact, it's um, well, it's about two years and three months. Months spelled M-U-N-T-S. So don't you think, I think now it's pretty safe to say, unless you believe that they parked right here, got out, and swam her body across the creek, got all wet, lifted it up, and put it there. Or they merely drove to right here, and this street view is 2008, but I think it looks similar now uh, if you look at, well, actually, let's open up... Um, I think Cairo's video number one. There's the, there it is right there, the opening. So there you go. So as long as that chain isn't up, but it doesn't even look like it's a locked chain. Are you there, Cairo? Is it, was it a locked chain? Or was it just one that you sort of click over something? Yeah, so look at this. That road right there goes all the way through on that little tiny... This, there, there's a road that goes right through there, I, I believe. Let's see. There's a strip of land there that you can definitely see on Google Earth right here. See that? And you can see that cars actually, or I don't know if it's a car, but a vehicle of some sort had made it through on this little tiny narrow area. And then they probably just pulled up right here in the dark, probably turned... You know, they had their lights on for a little bit and then turn them off and then buried the body. Then they just got the hell out of there, drove, the, got out the same way late at night, got on the freeway there. It's a long drive back. It's literally, I mean, look how far you have to go. It's a little bit like in the um, Allison Watterson case where they dumped the truck. But look, you'd have to drive all the way over like that and then around. And maybe you could probably go this way too, but whichever's shorter. So there you go. I think that's it. I think for sure 
I, I would be I would say it's most likely uh, opposite of what I originally believed it's most likely that they pulled off and just went just like that it's so simple I just didn't realize that that was uh, there was a little strip and here's what I was talking about an oxbow for example see over years probably in the next 30 years or so this will just be an island right here because this water as it rushes around will keep eating in to this bank right here and eventually it'll create an opening that runs into this river and then all of a sudden this will be cut off right here even though that's another creek the water will just end up feeding in right there and this will be cut off right there you see what I'm saying and this will just be a little island that you can't get to other than going through the, the water. So, man, like 20 years from now, somebody might not have ever even found that. Although, yeah, because you would have to make it walk through, be on that side. Or maybe somebody that was over here walking saw that. Yeah, I don't know if the Hawks would have thought something like that. They're kind of, you know, <laughs> they're pretty clever. I'll, I'll give them that. They are clever. Like, let, for example, if they are the people who did this, we're going to have to go back and re-watch those interrogation tapes. Don't you think? Because then you'll be able to watch that and go, that is genius. Look at that. That is amazing how he was able to, especially Nick's, interrogation because I think he did he he was incredible uh, I mean I'm not trying to be like but he really had almost no flaws in how he was there it was pretty crazy thanks Christy Turner and uh, Miss Giss and I don't mean in a good way it was just incredible how he seemed like a frustrated person Uh, with the interview and just he kept saying the same thing over and over again and you know he seemed like he actually kind of believed what he believed but I actually think you know it's very good chance that they are both involved with this and that means that whole thing was completely bogus and that will be very interesting to watch again and then They'll probably end up being another round. Of, well, I don't know. I don't think he, he would allow himself to be interrogated again. Neither of them. Yeah, right, William? Jesus. Because you got to admit, like, don't you think that he did pretty well in there and he never caved in? He did great with the FBI guy. He made the FBI guy look like a... Um, now, he, he absolutely blew away the FBI. If you were going to score a game, it was like 150 to 6. I mean, there was almost nothing that the FBI guy, uh, agent, the polygraph guy, did that worked whatsoever. Yeah, it is. It's really scary. And look how scary it is how Brooks acted, right? Just totally casual, looking around, you know. And just It just shows you... You know, if, if they are the ones that did it, it just shows you that whatever mental um, issues they have run in the family. Because I think the mom might even know something about it. Yeah. Yeah, Nick, well, they, they tell Nick that he failed his polygraph test. We don't know if he failed anything. And you know how they always say, oh, it was inconclusive, when that just means that they don't believe what you said. And it definitely doesn't show that you're guilty. We're just going to say it's inconclusive to make your mind race a little bit. Yeah. But man, as soon as, if they get arrested, we're just going to pull right back up. Well, if they get arrested and evidence comes out, that just makes you think, okay, yeah. Then we'll have to watch that again. S especially Nick's um, 
I, Brooks isn't really that interesting, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Brooks seemed, you know, he seemed a little too casual about it. And a lot of the stuff he said, you know, he did mention, oh, yeah, we were we were in a fight. You know, apparently there's some, like, she had some of his financial records, too. Yeah. The only thing that polygraph tests are good for are... Were you willing to take the polygraph test? Uh, and they use that like, oh, it was a little dodgy that he didn't take it. <laughs> Even though it's not admissible in court because it's totally, um, you know, not a factual thing. It's a little bit like voodoo. It's not admissible. You still say, hey, do you want to take this test? And somebody goes, no, it's not admissible, so... Um, it's not going to prove anything, so I'm not going to take it. Oh, you're guilty, you see, because a non-guilty person, they would have taken it. Rah. Well, that's true, Tammy, but what about Nick's frozen left elbow? Now, the people were pointing that out. Good night, Betty Smith. Yeah, Nick, uh, well, that's the thing is when somebody says, like like they were, I was arguing with somebody, when they say they can't remember something, you can't prove that they can't remember something. But it also, in a way, proves that somebody's full of shit, okay? Just like Kevin Horn in the Jody Arias case. Well, to be honest with you, I don't remember ever speaking to Detective Flores about the case, even though he's the lead detective and you are the medical examiner in the most famous case that ever happened in Arizona. But you don't remember ever speaking to the lead detective. Ah, right. Okay. See, I apply it to even people that everyone likes. It doesn't matter to me. Right. <laughs> That's what I agree with that, Mag. I think you're 100% right. When someone says they don't recall, <clears throat> it means that, oh yeah, I remember, but I'm using the technical I don't recall term. You know, when you don't remember, you literally say I don't remember. I bet you, I bet you uh, an innocent person would almost always say, you know, I don't, actually don't remember that. You say, I don't recall, when you knew that that's what you're supposed to say when it's something you you can't say because it'll incriminate you. Oh, I don't think Nick froze at all. You mean you're talking about in the FBI interrogation? No. He was just listening to the guy, and you could tell, his, you know, how his lips, Nick's lips sort of move as he... He's trying to think through the phraseology of what he's going to say. He's kind of moving his lips around a little bit. Yeah, he was just sitting there listening to this guy, just going, God, this guy has nothing. You know, you know like the, the guy was trying the oldest trick. Now, now, listen, I know you did it and everything. So just how, but how did you do it? Now, were you able to, you know, and it's like the guy's just looking at him like, I didn't even, I didn't do it, you idiot. Right, he, he just, I think almost everybody understands it. I think I could pass a polygraph test. You just go in there and you just act, you just sort of think of something else and blindly, vaguely answer something. Tell, tell us something that you know is not true and we'll use that as a gauge. 
Well, really? Because what, what I'm about to tell you isn't true. It's so simple to just say it without any emotion attached to it. So how are you going to use that? See, that's where it's a little bit like well-witching. You know, it's just... Okay, well, hey, look at everybody. William Zambrano is now a body language expert. He said that Nick bites his lip, and therefore those are subconscious re, uh, responses to what? Uh, were those innocent comments or guilty comments when he bit his lip? <laughs> what is that item right there, Cairo? I don't even know what that is. Is that an arm? Yeah, it's obvious that Nick, being a police officer, knows exactly the tactics of every single, the interrogators and the FBI guy. He was just looking at him. And then <laughs> uh, the FBI guy didn't get any points at all. <laughs> hey, you, you know me too well, William. There you go. No, it's an elbow on a table. Okay. Human lie detector. Gonna get ya. I don't know what that means. Curious Georgia. Wish I did. Well, it here's what's weird is that... Uh, what was it? Like Nick said he got a call from Brooks and it was urgent. And then he, he doesn't remember what that was about. Really? <laughs> yeah, doesn't sound that catchy. Uh, I don't know what it has to do with what we're talking about, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, anyways, I think it'll be really fascinating to watch those again at some point. Yeah, don't try to play me like an old projector. Gonna get ya. When Brooks said there was still some yogurt in the fridge and the interviewer could go get one if he wanted I was like this guy's beyond moronic <laughs> yeah Brooks he, he seems like a total idiot and Nick sort of had to sort of guide him even though he's the one that makes the most money he's just it's all probably because he's better looking than Nick right so um, you know, Nick probably helped him get through life with the street smarts. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Sass man. How's it going, Sass man? Yeah, hey, well, the Blazers won tonight, by the way. Another close game. They have had nothing but close games. And everyone just goes, well, God, the other team didn't have their best players. Well, sometimes when the best players don't play, they're harder to play against because everybody knows the best players' tactics and then nobody else gets the ball. And then when you play another game, the other players come in and they start making all these shots because they want to impress everybody and they play as hard as they can. And it's harder. But anyways, Nick was obvious. 
What do you mean Nick was obvious to me? Yeah, well, I mean, if you believe that they did it, you're going to go, oh, it was obvious he was the person. But to be honest with you, Nick acted exactly how you would act if you were incredulous about being accused of being, you know, having something to do with killing and you didn't do it. So that's what was interesting about it. I don't think so, Cairo. I don't think so. Yeah, we already did the... But apparently I don't know anything about the Cavett case, so I'm not worthy of talking about it. Just ask J JP. He'll let you know. Yeah, we, we talked about it. We played the 50-something minute long interview with... Um, the individual named Shannon Ryan. He was the last person to have seen her, apparently. Although there's other, you know, if his story is true, then somebody else saw her. Yeah, what, what, did, what did you think of it, Melinda? You got a great last name, by the way. What did you think of, have you already watched the guy's interview? What did you think of it? What do you mean, what's odd? I don't get it. What did you think of the interview? Or not his interview, his, his video that he put out. <clears throat> yeah, it was entertaining. I was trying to get Melinda to say what she thought of it. She probably watched it. Yeah, well, listen, everybody. See, the thing is, is when you watch interrogation stuff, we're not all sleuthy like everybody thinks, right? You know, like everybody's like, oh, we got, we got it all figured out. We got it. Because you, you, you guys all remember what happened. In the, um, I, I brought it up earlier. That other case. What was the one with um, uh, Shane, where he did the interview? And I remember even in our chat, there was a lot of people go, "Oh my God, look at him! Look at him! He's looking around! He's looking around!" Yeah, Heidi Broussard, looking around. Look at he's looking around. Look at he's looking around. Oh wow, wow, wow! And I said, "Hey, everybody! No, no, look at, look how shitty this interview is." You know, he's telling him, hey, I, you know, I, 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 I need to sit down. I'm, I'm just really uncomfortable. I just, you know, and, and all these really super Chris Watts sleuths came out and kept saying, oh, wow. Yeah, he's guilty. He's guilty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And it turns out he had absolutely nothing to do with it whatsoever. The only thing I ever said was, yeah, maybe they got in a fight over money or something. Maybe. But I don't know. Look how I think they treated him shitty in that interview. So for me, you got to throw the interview out. and You know, it's just having a conversation about possibilities. But there was, you know, channels out there and super sleuths on the Internet who absolutely destroyed that guy. Made it sound like he was, a, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer's cousin. So thankfully, on this channel, we didn't do that. Except we didn't get any credit for it. The whack jobs who kept saying Shane did it the whole time just happened to be doing a show when somebody called in and said, oh, wow, you know, as if the case was broken. <laughs> and then they all changed their minds. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It was absolutely incredible. It's embarrassing, really, that, that people get away with that and they're not held accountable for it. Yeah, but you, you think he was, Susie, but you don't know, right? Yeah, I mean, how do you know he was lying about anything? He did say that one time he said he lied because he was frustrated. 
He said it twice. He even, you know, he didn't even correct it after he said it the first time. But what things did he say that you think he was lying about? Like, you know, it's hard for us to know if he's lying at all. Unless we have all the facts. Right, I remember that. You remember that? And not only that, the host was too, didn't it? The host was bashing Shane too. And, and I remember the first couple days that she was covering it, she said, I'm not like Gray Hughes, who likes the facts. I like to speculate. You know, we speculate too, but we speculate on facts. I like to speculate. And I think there's I think Shane had something to do with it, she said. Over and over. And then they had the show with all these people trashing and bashing Shane into oblivion. And then it all takes a turn and somehow I mean, that was probably the most unjust credit given to anybody I've ever seen on YouTube. It was unbelievable. It was it was it was absolutely freaky that there was credit given to somebody that did what she did. <laughs> it, was, it was unreal. Uh, so, you know, and they go, "You're just jealous, Gray." No, no, I, I'm really not. I'm mad. I'm sad about it. Okay, because I, I didn't break anything. I was just covering the case. Yeah, always talks about it like it was some major achievement. And it was just disgusting. Yeah, I don't know, Cairo. I, I did see his comments he made on um, Anadarko Oil, though. And that's where I started going, hmm, that's interesting. Does he know Chris Watts? Uh, no, I just went that's still in that same position on the DNA Dope project, our Sky Shoots project. I guess it was called Sumpner County. Well, hold on. That's not what it was called. Just a second. Yeah, see, active cases. So up here, I guess these top ones are ones that you that need funding. These ones are pending cases, trying to get DNA samples. So, that, so that's the Sumter County one. And then ours is Summit County John Doe. So we, cut, we paid for this one. So that means they've extracted the DNA. They're just waiting for somebody to do the genealogy on it right there. And this is the, on July 10th, 2016, hikers in the White River National Forest discovered a human skull in an area known as the Sky Chutes between Copper Mountain Resort and Breckenridge. Uh, let's see, Summit County, Colorado, nearly a month later on August 3rd, 2016, searchers found human skeletal remains and personal items nearby. A forensic pathologist determined the remains to be that of a white male, 5'5 to 6'3, 30 to 50 years old. Evidence indicated he was a smoker. Damage to the skull was consistent with a self-inflicted gunshot to the head from a 45 caliber <clears throat> handgun found near his remains. Two water bottles with the personal items were dated February 7, 2012. So he'd been there for four years, indicating the man most likely died in 2012. Other items found with the body advanced survival gear which was weird including a high-tech headlamp and foot traction devices like snowshoes were well they're more like you know for ice were consistent with suicide and have baffled and were inconsistent with suicide and have baffled investigators yeah and those are his actual glasses there and so what I did was we were looking at the um, the case of uh, Schnee Oberholzer, Annette Schnee and um, Oberholzer, uh, Bobby Joe Oberholzer, I think. And, uh, you know, I was sort of looking at other cases around there, and then we stumbled across this one. It turns out the same medical examiner 
was covering, you know, did a press conference on this case, so I contacted her, and then we, she hadn't really even heard of doing the genealogy stuff yet, so I said, hey, well, let's do a fundraiser, and I'll get you the money, and shit, I, I think it was like, it took us three days to get, I'm, our, my channel, myself, donated like five or six hundred, but we'd got twenty seven hundred dollars, and then we sent it in, and boom, the process started. And that's where we're at right now. So on this channel, we actually try to get shit done. Okay. Yeah, so that's where we're at. It's in the process of somebody just needs to do the genealogy work. I might send an email out to see where they're at. Because I'd like to, you know see if they're having any luck or if they even started it yet. I mean, the pandemic's probably put a hold on some things. But, yeah, I think I'm about done with the show tonight, everybody. <laughs> Getting kind of tired. I've been on here for three hours now. But, anyway, thank you guys all for showing up tonight. Uh, you know, sorry for the little interaction with some I really, I wouldn't really call JP a troll. He was just like really, you know, it's the know-it-all type, you know, like oh yeah, hey no, it's really you know just blurting out a bunch of stuff over and over again, and he wasn't even accurate on some of it. Like the whole thing about the name, it doesn't mean anything. Thanks, Curious Georgia. Yeah, and then he started bashing me, my channel, you know, because I didn't know every single fact in the uh, Layla Cavett case, you know. Like, I know the bait, the general part of it. The whole point of the show was just to listen to what the guy was saying for 50-something minutes and see if we could detect. I mean, it's possible that he was just building a persona of Layla so that he could say other things at the end. Up. Uh, no, Cairo, you cannot get a complete recap. But listen, I think, thank you everybody for showing up tonight. Uh, let me go through this. Thank you to Michelle Nicholas, Tracy Seamer, Andrea Rogero Drum, Mysterious Monkey, Mag with the Cat Eye Donation, Gloria Batari, Billy Boy Blue, Shelly Ann, Billy Boy Blue again, Jennifer Cochran Fent. Mysterious Monkey, Kit Kat, Allison R, Claudia Neubauer, uh, Arthur Roy, Zozo, Katie Thompson, Stella Hope, Kit Kat, Curious Georgia, Sarita, Zozo, Dadio Caspi Norse's Rock, Claudia Neubauer, Allison R, Kristen Cure, Amy Fountain, Paisley Dream, Zozo, Curious Georgia again, KNS, Bush and Beach Lifestyle. Uh, Chrissy Paradis, Zozo again, Dadio Caspi Norse's Rock, and then um, Jules and Rebecca, their membership, or Rebecca upgraded to Oogla Boogla Freak. Uh, Alifair M, Christy Turner, Miss Skiss, Curious Georgia again, Cairo, and Dadio Caspi Norse's Rock. She always likes to be, she's always like this last, you know, always does something during the show, but right at the very end, that one last one with a cute little emojis so thank you very much maybe I'll do one flyby round since I haven't done one in a while <clears throat> go to my spot I haven't been here in a while I'm not sure how smooth it's gonna be but there we go Oh. You guys still there? <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. 
really changed there at the end. I know, okay.
listen. Man. Mary Lou, you're just, we're blabbing during the whole show, but it looked like people didn't mind that you were talking sometimes. Okay, well, gosh, if they like it, why do you have to say anything? Well, you're not supposed to be arguing with me. You're supposed to be arguing with John Boy. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to be arguing with me. Jeez. Okay, good night, Mary Lou. You both are so mean. Boo-hoo-hoo. Gray, you have to go in jail sometime. Boo, you're so mean. Gee. Wow, what a baby. Okay, good night, Mary Lou. Good night, John Boy. Gee. Wow. You know, those two, they're just never going to be able to make it. All right, everybody, make sure that you're washing your hands, you're wearing your mask whenever you go out in public. Don't let people tell you that not to do that. You definitely should be wearing your mask every single time that you go out in public. You know, if you go to a park and you're the only one at the park and you're not walking by anybody, you might not have to have it on every second. But. And, uh, you know, make sure you wash your hands before touching your face and, uh, you know, maintain your social distancing. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining the show tonight. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll, we'll try to brush, brush up on that, on Layla's kids, you know, so that we can be experts, too. All right, everybody. Have a good night. And until next time... Be safe out there. I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Rejecta. I'm a certified human lie detector Gonna get ya, gonna strike ya If you try and play me like an old projector Crime sector is my nectar Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture Crime collector, freak connector And I'm always gonna be a protector Fool deflector, interceptor And I'm meaner than a spectre With a vector on his spectre With all his vector Remember, I've attempted to fucking check ya. I have no agenda. I'm a pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. Alright, everybody. Talk to you. Okay, good night, Jamboy. Good night, Wow, that was really quick. Be safe out there.